Hello everyone, welcome back to Boone Builds, where my goal is to inspire creativity for Lego fans just like you. I'm very excited about tonight. This is what I am calling the season two finale of AFL Spotlight Live. We have the crew that you recognize from Beyond the Brick. Starting out, this is Mike Reiter. It is the cool factor. Thank you. Hey Mike. That's me. Next up, we got Brian Saviano, Bricks O'Brien. There he is. I should have like da 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 music playing. And last for now, we've got Kirk Wilson. Kirk hey Wilson from, from Vision Bricks. So, um, an interesting thing here tonight is Beyond the Brick Night. And I think that perhaps most people who are into Beyond the Brick might recognize Joshua Hanlon more than any of the rest of us. Yeah, because he's been in like almost all of their convention floor interview videos, uh, but he couldn't be here until a little bit later tonight. So he's coming. He's coming, everyone. Don't worry. Um, so Joshua will be here. But I thought Mike, Kirk, Brian, and I could have some fun as some of the uh, the main and recent contributors to Beyond the Brick. Hi, what do you guys think? Can we have a little bit of fun until Joshua gets here? I think so. With we, gotta, we, we gotta, can make all the fun of him as we want. We have yeah, we got to say all the bad things. <laughs> yes, we have the best fun without Joshua. Good, <laughs> good. Hey, Kenny, Dave, Jeff, McElwee, Orange Bricks is here, Brickanista, Luca is here. Uh, let's see, Larry Legond, Moto, thank you all so much for being here. And for those of you who are running the moderation in the live chat tonight. I really want to thank you and appreciate you. Uh, but before we get any further, I should probably roll that stream uh, intro. This is the Beyond the Brick special, season two finale of AFL Spotlight Live. Let's go! Cool. I always dig your intro, man. I always do. I know. So Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much for, for being here tonight, you guys. I really appreciate it. Thanks for having us. We yeah. are going to have some fun. We're going to have some fun here. Just so that you all know, tonight's going to be a little bit different than a normal Thursday night. You know, typically we dive in here with one uh, one other AFL. I typically have one guest, and we ask some questions like, how did you get into Lego? How did you get connected with the Lego fan community? Show us some of your creations. Tonight is uh, all uh, bets are off. We're going to do a bunch of other different kinds of things because Mike and Kirk, I want to have you each on for your own dedicated episode after the new year. Absolutely. Thank you. Good. Appreciate yep. it. You're going to be yep. back. All yep. right. You guys are going to be back. So that takes me to a big announcement. This is the finale of season two and season three of April Spotlight Live will be back in January of 2021 i'm going to take a little bit of time off from these live streams for the holidays and uh give my guests a break give my viewers a break on thursday evenings but i will be putting out some other content through december but you can look for new episodes including mike including kirk um and brian you're at the top of my list of people to have back someday uh, I had I so am? much fun with you. Yeah, I had so much fun with you. <laughs> yes, you are. <laughs> okay, so um, first round of questions, and we will be taking questions from the chat in just a little bit. Maybe we'll do one round of Q&A with the chat before Joshua gets here, and maybe we'll give them another shot once Joshua's in the room. But um, because he's not here, what uh, can we go around the room here, around the screen, and do you have any awkward uh, uh, story about Joshua? <laughs> Brian? Every Tuesday, I do the quarantine cast with Joshua on the Beyond the Brick YouTube channel. And I, I love just seeing the reactions he has to the outlandish nonsense, I say. constant. <laughs> it's really a constant barrage of whatever pops into my head. And, and Joshua Hanlon, great guy. Very professional, put together, does the interviews. He talks to Lego designers. He's, he's got his act together. 
I'm the wild card. I'm the one who's like, let's have some fun. Let's be funny. You know, Joshua's not really funny. So I'm the funny guy. <laughs> so I'm the one who rocks the boat and he just doesn't know how to handle it. So every Tuesday, there's something I say that just throws him off. And he's like, I don't want to react this way, but I am. And so that's just all encompassing for that. But now, Brian, would you would you tell him he's not the funny one if he was here? Yes. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. You'd, you'd say that to his face. Okay. 100%. No, he knows it, at least between the two of us. Um, I would have more faith in John at this rate. You know, like jo Joshua makes – he has funny reactions and moments and whatnot. But, you know, I'm wheeling and dealing. I'm on stage. You know, I'm doing the stand-up to the bubba. But, you know, I don't know if he's – you know, <laughs> he's into military history. I'm into – fun things so you know there's a there's a different approach for sure well uh you know i actually think john has a pretty great uh he's he's got a dry sense of humor but i yeah. often when i spend time with josh and john i often find myself chuckling at these little little things john will slide in yeah yeah mike kirk either of you have a funny uh joshua hanlon story i'm trying to think Kira, uh, go first I didn't. Uh, I didn't prepare you guys at all for this. So. Yeah, no, no, no. no, no. Like, wait, let, let me check my notes. Let me check my notes. <laughs> uh, I'm trying to think. I honestly can't say. I, I know this guy. It's right. No, wrong way. This wrong guy, way. Yeah, there you go. Right, right here. This guy. <laughs> I have to put up with him every single Tuesday. Well, you're not there some Tuesdays. Mm, well, you're... No. Okay. Well, I can't say every time. Well, it's all. Oh. Mm. Oh, I'm, Kirk Wilson. I'm going to California on a plane for the first time and I don't know how yeah. to be yeah. on a plane all right I love giving Kirk that anyone who appears on the quarantine cast is subject to deal with me including Kirk and I have exactly dealing with Joshua and Kirk at the same time is great and I also love seeing Mike in the chat who wants to join but he's working <laughs> his real job a lot of the time but you know, it's still good. Yeah. Mike, it. what's your real job? Uh, I'm a video editor, uh, okay. full time. So I, th I, th with, uh, I knew that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like people think I'm. I used to be full time into Lego, but now I'm like some into Lego, but most of my time is dedicated to being a video editor for a completely unrelated company uh, about eyewear. So that's what I do. That's why I can't join Brian um on the on the casts but uh, but yeah that's what i do and um if i want to tell I, I actually do have an awkward moment with with joshua uh, actually the, the hand on the funny thing is i i joined beyond the, the brick um shortly before the whole like corona times you know oh so i i did not have many opportunities to meet them in person but this one time we we got the press passes to comic-con i think it was 2018 it was like shortly after i joined the crew and they asked me to um, to be a photographer for the Comic Con panel because they were running a panel with Lego, officially back then. And like I think Lego asked them to be a moderator for the new announcements. And I think one of the announcements was the Jurassic World new theme. I think uh, adventure something something Hidden Island. I don't yeah, remember. this was this was uh, just last year. We were there together, right? Yeah, was that yeah, your you first time? Was it was it twenty eighteen or twenty nineteen? Twenty it was twenty nineteen. It was the fiftieth anniversary. It was okay, the, okay, okay. It was it was the was last like San Diego Comic Con before gotcha. we we didn't get to have one this year. Go. So so my awkward moment with Joshua was that they asked me to bring my camera with like fancy lens and everything and just run around the you know before the lockdowns you were able to actually go to Comic Con and I was I had the press badge I had the Beyond the Brick shirt for the first time ever, and I was running around the venue just shooting. Joshua standing on the podium waiting for the announcers to begin the panel and I remember like I, I don't think he really likes to be on the photos at all <laughs> I was running trying to get a long shot on, on every angle of him for for you know for commemorative purposes and Joshua was just like eyeing me from the main stage he was standing there like really petrified before the public <laughs> speaking to a crowd of 300 people and I was just like corner of the room this way this way and he was like eyeing me like i'm taking pictures and he's like oh my god what is he doing <laughs> why is he taking so many pictures of me so i think he felt very awkward um and it was the first job i one of the first jobs I actually made for beyond the brick kind of like uh, collaboration and uh, i remember him being specifically uh, i think he was scared to speak <laughs> in such yeah, an important well, event and it, it was <laughs> I you said 300 people, but I I feel like 
that room was. I feel like that room was bigger than 300 people. Because you were there, yeah. It, it was the big uh -huh. one of the biggest halls. And it was the, the one of the main Lego panels, and and Josh I mean, yeah, was, so was I, moderating it. Yeah, I think they have. I think they have two. I, I I could be wrong. I'm not an expert on San Diego Comic Con, but I think they have. Yeah. A, a big venue that's like a 10,000, and then I think that they have um a a smaller they venue the, that's like yeah. somewhere of five or five to this eight thousand. This like one of the bigger ballrooms within the convention center, but the big one you're talking about is the whole H when they do all the big right. stuff. Yeah, the but the one we stuff. were in, the one we were in for Joshua's thing, I I want to say there was like 1500 chairs in there was that is that Probably. am i exaggerating um and maybe maybe the room wasn't full for for the lego panel but that was the exact mike i've told this story you were talking about the exact room where at the end of that panel they announced lego masters and i stood up from that room and exactly. i walked out the door and called mark Crookshank and said hey do you want to be my my Oh, My that's so cool. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. A little, but little I remember connection. this yeah. one because I, I know I know it was the first time that Lego asked Beyond the Brick to be their media partners and moderate the panel, which was a big it was a big deal to be like right. a mod, Comic Con moderator. It was it was a big deal. And I, I was I was like honored to be there just with the camera and all, allowed to like take pictures for, for for the crew that I just, you know, joined and it was pretty fun. But I remember just what was Pet, he was like he was like a like a like a like a statue on that podium just waiting. <laughs> it was like twenty minutes to the panel and he was like you know just like he wasn't moving for like 20 minutes and just eyeing me with this i was running around the room doing he was like just like not moving like was he yeah. alive or something he was he yeah. was petrified so i yeah. think that was funny that was like something i remember yeah yeah i i think it had much more to do with the uh what the the size of the room that we were in front of yeah but um, it was intimidating for sure okay cool so can we talk a little bit about just how each of you got connected to be on the brick? How did it happen? I I have my story. I'll hold on to mine, and um, I think we've heard Brian. So Brian, you could you could give us a, a shortened version of yours. But I, I want to hear from Mike and Kirk. What was what was like the beginning of your relationship with being a contributor to be on the brick? Uh, I'll let. I guess I'll let Mike go first. Oh uh, yeah. Mike, do you have more of that story about okay. how you connected with me on the I got you. I got you. Thank you. Um, right. Basically, for me, it was I was I was parting ways with uh, Brick Vault back then, and uh, I was like in between try to continue doing Lego content in one way or another. So I was launching, uh, slowly launching my my own channel, The Cool Factor, and just in the nick of time, Beyond the Brick the guys, the Hanlon brothers, announced they're looking for a reviewer, like a contributor. I think uh -huh. that's it was the time when they were starting to build this team we have today. Um, and people started messaging me because I didn't see the video at first. And people started messaging me like, hey, Mike, like, we know, like, Mike is free. Like, Mike is, you know, a, a freelancer right now. And uh, people started just messaging me like, hey, you should apply. You should, like, talk to, to Joshua. And, like, I knew the guys because they would come to Brickvolt Studio and they would, like, film the interviews. We had a few meetings. We knew each other from the community. And they knew my work uh, as an editor and as a host. So... I, I felt like, hey, it's, like, it's a great way to try and maybe be a good fit for the team. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I just applied from their video and, like, they responded quickly. I made a few, you know, ar ar arrangements uh, and, and started doing, uh, I think, first few reviews for, for Beyond the Brick. So that was pretty fast. My transition from being, like, Brick Vault, then Freelancer, then um, Beyond the Brick was pretty quick. It was just, like, this timing was kind of perfect for me. Um, and ever since, like, I, I couldn't be happier to be part of the crew, even though uh, as my life becomes more maybe busy or stuff like that, uh, I can't contribute as much as I used to. But but still, it's it's so much fun to be able to like contribute the, as much as I can um, so far. But yeah, it, it was pretty, pretty crazy timing back then. I remember um, just apl I applied. I was like, I wasn't expecting to be to be um, you know included in the team, but they said like, oh yeah, of course, Mike, we know you, and uh, we would love to see your work here on Beyond the Brick. And I was like, gee, thanks guys. <laughs> um, and that's how it started. It's not, not like a big romantic story or anything. Not like you bumped into each other on some convention and fell in love with each other. But I think they liked my work, and that's how, how I became a reviewer. And then. Uh, it expanded to being sort of like a con um, correspondent. So they sent me to Seattle uh, BrickCon. Then we they sent me to um, to Toronto where I met Brian uh, personally. 
on one of the uh, events for Gameloft, the mobile company that were making Lego uh, Legacy Heroes Unboxed, the long the long name game. And I met Brian, and you know he was also. I think Brian, you did not, you were not long in Beyond the Brick back then. It was like about the same uh, as I joined. Uh, well, it's funny. I remember them coming out with that video about looking for like contributors and whatnot, yeah. people to like sign on and do stuff. And I watched that video and I was like, nah, I don't want to do that. So then when it ended up being, <laughs> when, it, when it ended up uh, getting around to Brick Fair, Virginia, when I was uh, on the, the security booth building a Lego set after hours, Joshua requested that I tour the entire convention hall with them or most of the convention hall with them at around 11 o'clock at night after I had worked at least a 16 hour day of on my feet dealing with the public. And uh, after that point, it was like, Hey, all right, you know what you're doing. You know what you're talking about. And one of the first events that justified me getting a red shirt, at least temporarily was going to Toronto with Mike to cover that event in which I got to wear the red beyond the brick shirt, the official one, you know, not some, random shirt cobbled together but then i actually had to give it back because i think it was uh one boone who was supposed to go with mike to seattle but then boone was exactly. not around because yeah. he was doing a little thing called the master lego can we master talk about thing. it boone right now like that was the timing that you were super confidential yeah. about it i think we uh, can yeah talk we, about we, it right we now. could and then uh you know i had to give the shirt back it was for him and i'm like all right you know it's boone you know whatever it's, it's fine i'm just one-off job whatever and then you know and now here we are so you know so you still do you still not have a red shirt? Oh, now I do. No. Yeah, now oh, okay. I do. I said to them, like, listen, if I'm doing A, B, and C, you got to give me the shirt. And they're like, yeah, no problem. No. <laughs> I had one, uh, one, uh, one in your size, and uh, Joshua asked me to send one to you because, like, yes. well, how does he not have a shirt? And like, I yep. had an extra one, so yeah. There you so, go. Mike, did you cover BrickCon 2019 by yourself? Yes, yes. So that you, you were supposed to go with me, and. Uh, and you were unable being... because of confidentiality of Lego Masters, so you were fully invested into the show. And uh, we we talked to Joshua and John back and forth, like, and they's like, Mike, can you go alone? And I was like, I'm kind of good at this, doing stuff alone, like you know, vlogging. So I, I I went there and like spent three days in Seattle. Lost my voice by the end of the second day. Oh yeah. So if you if you look back at the content on Beyond the Break, because I think I recorded about twenty videos of different create, you know, the usual uh convention coverage but the first few videos were like you know me in the camera and like hey this is mike from beyond the brick and like this like this guy does this and like can you say a few words so i did like five or six videos that, that way and then if you look the, the the further videos the further i went into the show were like i was basically approaching people like can you hold the microphone and talk a few things about this set okay <laughs> 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 so that's how it went and I, I just i was holding the camera for like two days and like not talking at all because i just lost my voice but that was my initial like that was my initiation with beyond the brick as a correspondent when it comes to just coming and covering the event and that's how i learned on the job how to do it uh by myself so it was uh yeah f um, convention floor coverage plus editing on that one um, yeah, well, good. And that was fun. Yeah, but but yeah, you couldn't be there with me because of Lego Masters for sure. Yeah, we were intended to do that trip together, and mm -hmm. I had to back out because uh, it was actually I think it, it was casting finals was the same though the same weekend as uh, as Brick's uh, uh, Brick Con. And, and funny and enough, it's, it's, and they, they knew did not too. tell me the reason. They they just said, "Oh, just Boone can't go." <laughs> and like I was like, I don't know why. I didn't even know you were in Lego Masters back then. Oh yeah, like, well we were we were keeping it super secret yeah, during that yeah, time. Yeah, we were super low profile on that one. Kirk, I've got the same question for you, but I want to say hi to a few other people who have shown up in the live chat. Brent Waller, the Lego Ideas baller, I like to call him. I actually have never said that before, but I think I'm going to keep using it. Good name. Keep um, yeah, that's a good one. Huge inspiration to all of us here. Thanks for being here, Brent. Shy time is my time. Hey. What's up, dude? Shy, how you doing, buddy? Hey, Thanks for being here. Spot the Magic Ninja says, all the news that matters comes from these guys. Well, I'm glad Aww. you think Thank that's you. true. <laughs> um, let's see. Will, uh, I, I also, I wanted to say how to Aubrey is here. Damon, Isaiah. Uh, Charlupe, you're all awesome. Lego Matic, Rick Brickham. Hey, all of the all of the fun folks are here tonight. You're all doing great. All right, Kirk, how'd you get connected to Beyond the Brick? 
All right. So my story kind of is like different. So the first time I can say that I actually met Joshua and John in person was briefly at, I think this was, I think this was Philly Brickfest 2018. They were having the little like panel off to the side of the convention um, where they were like interviewing people that were displaying mocks and stuff at the convention that time. And so I decided to take my, I had a modern house, a mosaic and some other stuff that I decided to take over there. I'm like, okay, I'll do this. It should be fun. I'll be able to talk to them briefly. And then we had like one brief moment after that before I ended up leaving that convention. Fast forward, a few, hmm, I think this was the year 2019. I think they made this video where they were like, we're looking for people to join a team, to be contributors. If you're interested, you know, shoot an email and go from there. Now, when I watched the video, at first I was like, do I really want to do this? I'm like, do I want to do this? Is this something I'm going to be interested in? And after thinking about it some time, I was like, okay, you know what? I'm going to go for it. I'll see what happens. Go from there. I shot the email over to them. And then they, I think it was like a couple of days afterwards or so, they emailed me back. And they were like, hey, Kirk, um, thanks for reaching out to us. We'll take a look at your channel and stuff. Uh, and then go from there. And then I think it, was, it wasn't even long after. They replied back and they were like, it, I think it was John that replied back. And he was like, hey, we have this video. We would like for you to do it. Let's see what you got. And I was like, okay, let's do it. I, like, I was waiting for them to just say like, hey, we're going to accept you. And then we'll get back to you when it's time to work on something. But they were just like, just go ahead and do it. We want you to do this. And I'm like, oh, okay, let's do it. And it was it was a very exciting um, moment for me. And so ever since then, I've been a part of the team, just like working on videos here and there. And of course, doing the quarantine cast recently since the whole pandemic thing had started. So I, um, I've i enjoyed the experience. It really has allowed me to be able to improve my skills in terms of like editing and stuff and just engaging with more people throughout the community, which is another part that I do love about doing this sort of thing on YouTube. I thought your Ghostbusters Ecto-1 video was marvelous. Thank you. Just Thank all you. the different, you had so many different little detailed shots in there and the narration was great. It all, I thought it was great. Thank you. Thank um, you. you all, all three of you guys do incredible work. Um, Kirk, this, uh, <clears throat> the, there's a guy who's always here in the live chat here on Boone Bills. He's an incredible supporter of me, but the things I see him say about you make me nervous about what he might be saying about being behind my back. <laughs> things like, I've heard they recruited Kirk from a junior high AV club. It's true. <laughs> so, so I, I, I've now it seems to me like you get your fair share of uh, ridicule from. Jeff McElwee and Brian Saviano. I do. I've I just do. muted. I've just muted Brian, and uh, Jeff can't <laughs> talk to us right now because he's just in the live chat. So you've got thirty seconds, Kirk, to take any stabs at Brian and Jeff that you might want to go. You know what, Brian? I've been wanting to say this for the longest. You, my friend, have no talent. You have no humor. Every time we get on this stream <laughs> for quarantine cast, it just never works out. Full screen. I, full I screen. think. I honestly think that people just tune into it mainly for me and Joshua, and that's about it. And they only stay there because Joshua is there. If Joshua wasn't there, I don't think anyone would tune in. I don't think anyone would tune in. I'm sorry. But it's the truth. I meant, I meant Brian full screen. It's Brian. It's the truth. Oh, full screen, full screen Brian? <laughs> that face. We're just, here, we're just gonna full screen Brian while he makes face. faces. Beautiful face, everything. Um, All right, I've unmuted Brian. Kirk, Kirk, thanks for thanks for playing. Uh, oh thanks God. for thanks for playing along, buddy. May may I have a rebuttal, Mister Mister Langston? I suppose. I don't, does it does it matter what Mr. I think? Wilson, can I get the full screen for a hot second, Boone? Just a oh hot, my hot, oh God. hot second here. I agree. <laughs> well, I agree. No, I, I, I know, I'm fully aware I'm a talentless hack. That's why I talk and <laughs> build. Okay, I'm aware. All right. All right. Well, thank you, thank you so much uh, for being here. So let's do a quick little lightning round of like uh, typical Lego fan questions. And so I, I would, I wish I had a theme song, but it'd be like typical Lego fan questions. Typical Lego fan questions. Bling. 
and there'd be like some words or something like that. But um, this is going to be rapid fire, so I'll, I'll ask a question, and then I'll say somebody's name, and you're going to give me a quick answer, okay? What is your favorite Lego element color of all time? Kirk? Light bluish gray. Mike? Dark blue. Brian? Medium measure. Ooh, all right. What is Ooh. your favorite Lego theme? Brian? Lego Super Mario, what else would it be? It's a me, a Mario. Kirk. Ideas. Oh, I love ideas. Mike, favorite theme? L Lego ideas. Lego ideas, yeah. Lego ideas yeah. is good. Well, I love it. Hold on, that's kind of cheating because ideas can be anything under the sun. Well, okay, okay, okay. Well, yeah. okay, besides that, then. I okay, still, I say expert? it. I'm like, if I, I, can, I count it as I a, always lead, I always lead that by answering that question like, if I can say ideas, I say ideas. But if like all time, I tend to say like pirates, space. Mm, okay. Uh, sure. But but I man, I have such a huge appreciation for ideas. Okay. Sorry, Mike Kirk, I didn't mean to cut you off. No, no, no. You're, you're, <laughs> I mean, besides, I'm trying to think. Besides ideas, I guess it would be Lego Marvel superheroes. That's like the second thing. All right. Okay. What is your favorite? video that you've ever produced for beyond the brick mike actually the the vlog tour the series of videos with brian in toronto in the game loft that was fun okay. that was a lot of fun to produce and a lot of fun to edit uh, i think i made three videos i i collect them as a whole experience uh with uh, brian doing the tour which was a lot of fun. Uh, I think I, there, there was a vlog from my perspective, and I think there was an interview. So that, that package, that was the favorite I ever did for, for Beyond the Break. All right, everybody watching at home, this is uh, where you get to do a little bit of homework later after you are done watching my stream. You can go check these guys out, and they're telling you their favorite videos that they've produced for Beyond the Brick. Um, they're worth watching. Kirk, what's your favorite video you ever made for Beyond the Brick? The Brick World Chicago, I think, can't remember which year it was that they had it for, but it was like a highlight video capturing all the moments from that convention. So oh. that was my favorite one. Awesome. All right, Brian? At uh, 12.30 at night, I decided after reviewing all of the Lego Super Mario sets that I was going to randomly make an ASMR video, give it to John, and if he wanted to upload it, he <laughs> could. If not, I was going to upload it. And then he did, and then it did pretty well. So that one is my favorite. It went viral. Awesome. How many? Cool. How many views? Uh, four hundred thousand. But yours, destiny, yeah. sweet beautiful boy, is yeah. over a million now. So yeah, I, I could have sworn that was Who? a video Who? that got beaten by Boone's video. Yes. Oh, yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. Oh, the one, the one where I took it apart. Yes, yes, it's over. <laughs> oh, oh wow! Hey, wow. that's a. That's a little bit of a victory, right? For you. All right. Yes, it is. <laughs> Compared to me. And it's like, Not I too think shabby. I, I, I think my favorite video, like from a I mean, now I have I feel like I have to say the video where I took apart uh Mario if if it's already had a million views, but um but I think as from like a passion project standpoint, the my review of uh the haunted house that came that earlier this year i like this um one. i just yeah. i got so deep into the lore and the hidden you know features and and uh, all the all the stuff all right awesome oh this was supposed to be a rapid fire round sorry um <laughs> uh they've all escaped me okay if you if you had to eat one lego set this is a perry this is a perry wang uh question if you had to eat one Lego set, and and let's say that it is edible, like they're not Lego bricks, you don't have to eat the Lego bricks, but somehow a Lego set of your choice has been magically transformed into an edible treat, which Lego set would you choose and why? Who first? Who goes first? Brian. Uh, the Lego Super Mario set Toad's Treasure Hunt. Very colorful, mushroom-like, and would probably taste very good. There you go. Mike? That new creator hamburger food truck. <laughs> That's a good one. Ah, well, that makes sense. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Kirk? Uh, see, this is a difficult one. Uh, 
I feel like I want to say Ecto One, but that's just because I like the set so much. Uh, God, it's inside it of there. It's like a marshmallow. Yeah, you know what? We can yeah. go with that. Let's go. Let's go Ecto One. I'll yeah. say that. Yeah. Marshmallow with a hint of slime. I know, right? Uh, yeah. It looks oh, appetizing. Man. You know, hey, <laughs> it works. Such <laughs> a beautiful set. All right, let's um let's dive into a little bit. We can do a little bit more of that later. Let's go to the live chat um for some questions for Mike, Kirk, and Brian. And while you all are talking about uh, about that in the live chat, go ahead and throw those questions in there. You can ask. Are, you guys are willing to answer some questions from the live chat, right? Absolutely. Well, if if, yep. if we run, into, we didn't talk about this beforehand, but if if we run into anything. That um, is something you don't want to answer. You can just say pass. Okay. And uh, there's three other people in the room. Any, um, any comments from Jeff McAwee, I veto. <laughs> okay, awesome. Jeff is um, uh, shadow I, I, I might show them anyway. You, 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 anyway. <laughs> All, All right. right. So um, I'm going to, while people are putting their questions in, hey, let me tell you, if you've got a question in the chat, um, it helps me out if you put a question mark at the end of your question. Um, it doesn't help me out as much if you ask your question over and 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 over. Um, but we are going to go over to, uh, we'll do two things while people are putting in some questions there. As usual, my live streams right now are brought to you by my current Lego Ideas Project, the Magic School Bus. We're at 3,457 supporters thank you to everyone who has already supported i've been uh, stuck at that number for a few days i think maybe or maybe it's just slowed dramatically so if you're watching this and you haven't voted i'd love to invite you to please do that you can go to i, I usually put the link in the description but i can't remember if i did for this video or not uh, but you can go to ideas.lego.com and search for magic school bus and if you have already supported please Please uh, ask your friends, ask your mom, ask your uncle. Any support is helpful. We are over a third of the way there, but moving a bit slow at the moment. I hear that the middle from like 3,000 to 8,000 is really, really the challenge on a lot of LEGO Ideas projects. Let's talk about these guys real quick. Um, Mike, you can find Mike on YouTube as Cool Factor. I Is that to correct, Mike? Up. Yes, there sir. you are. Uh -huh. And um, how did you how did you come up with the name Cool Factor? You know what? I think my main premise was to not have a brick in the name for some reason. Okay. Okay. I don't know because I I knew I wanted to because um, I love making videos in any way capacity. My viewers, my guys who know me on YouTube, know that I, for example, like doing vlogs a lot when I have good topics for vlogs. So my channel, you can find stuff about Lego, probably about 80% of the content is Lego, but you can occasionally find a random vlog about me driving a Tesla or something like that. So with that in mind, when I was starting the channel, I knew I'm going to be on my own for most of the time. And Lego is a big part of my life, but I also wanted to expand the content to something that has the cool factor in it. Because I like different things. I'm a bit of a nerdy guy, not only about Lego. And, you know, when I brainstormed, my, me and my wife, we sat down together and I was like, hey, I need a name for the channel. And it cannot be brick something, brick this, brick that. And I, I knew, like, probably that's going to limit my exposure to LEGO fans, because usually channels who have brick in the name are more discovered. And you automatically know that the channel is affiliated with LEGO in some way or another. Uh, but I went with it. And the cool factor allows me to, to do different types of content. If you even look at my channel, my most popular upload is a video about a, a, a couple of friends of mine who are making bass guitars from scratch. Like there are craftsmanship luthiers that make bass guitars. And this video has like 315,000 views, as you can see. And this was completely not Lego related. I was in Poland. Uh, I reached out to them for a reunion from high school. And uh, I knew about their craft a bit and I made this video. So I, I like telling stories in a different, uh, about different topics. And I always come back to Lego. So the cool factor, uh, because Lego has the cool factor automatically, in my opinion, I also find cool factor in different things. Um, and, and that's why I named the channel that way. And I think it's a bit unique that way. Uh, so you don't get another brick channel, you know, <laughs> in the community. So that was, that was my idea, pretty much. Awesome. 
Uh, well, thank you very much, Mike. And you all watching, you can find the links to these guys' individual channels in the description of this video. I did definitely put those in. We're going to go to Bricks O'Brien. Bricks O'Brien. Oh, typo. Oh, oh, there we go. That's me. Brian, Brian, did you tell us uh, in your episode of Able Spotlight Live, did you tell us how you came upon the name Bricks O'Brien? Uh, yes, I did. I think you um, did, right? You could, do you have a short version? Um, not really. I mean, okay. now, now when I look at it, I'm like, well, my name is Bricks O'Brien, and I, I do video game stuff. So what does that name pertain to Bricks? I mean, the, the Bricks are the, the little bricks and bits of uh, info and knowledge I put into everything I do. Let's say okay. that instead of lego bricks physically because all my lego energy goes through basically beyond the brick other than that initial unboxing i did of me getting the mario sets early um but yeah i do mostly video game related things on my channel so if you're looking for lego stuff from me on my personal channel you probably won't find it there but if you stay tuned to beyond the brick uh lego mario set reviews or any other commentary is all done through there so that's where that energy goes and uh, so it's interesting because that means Mike is making a lot of Lego content, but he doesn't have brick in his name. You have brick in your name, and you're not making any Lego content. Yeah, it's, it's kind of like kind that. of kind of strange. Maybe you should trade channels. You know, I, I probably should have. You know, I we probably should have like just called myself like I should have just been like Brian Saviano. But you know, hey, here we are. So that's all right. Kirk, uh, we're gonna find Kirk over at Vision Bricks. Vision Bricks. So, uh, Kirk, how'd you come up with the name Vision Bricks? Okay, so this is really a question that I can never really answer too well, no matter how many times people ask me. So, essentially, whenever I see the word vision, I think of something that's coming to your mind, to your, to your, you know, your head or whatever. And that's essentially how most of my mocks are built. Anything that I build is more so like something that I see in my head first. And then the next day or however soon, I'm just like, okay, I'm going to go and build that through the bricks. And so that's essentially why I called my, my channel that name. Uh, it, it has nothing to do with the superhero, no matter how many times people keep thinking that. It has nothing to do with it whatsoever. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you guys for that. Let's dive into these questions from the chat. I'm going to scroll up until I should have looked at what time it was that I made that. What is your favorite type of video to produce for Beyond the Brick? Set review, con vlog. So of all the different types of videos that you've made for Beyond the Bricks, what, what's your favorite, Mike? I gotta say the the vlogs and the the um, convention coverage. Even though you know I only had pretty much two chances to do that before Corona times, uh, I think that's what defines me as a creator because I that's my favorite content to make. And uh, I think that was also one of my uh, when I was pitching my uh, my membership with Beyond the Brick. I told them you know guys I can bring some some storytelling, some some type of type of vloggy content to the channel, and they agreed that it would be nice to to include. And I. A year later, more than a year later, I still think I'm pretty good at this and I like doing this the most. So if I have the chance to do like a live kind of coverage, kind of a vlog, interview of sorts, I think I feel the best at it. And the second, second favorite would be review because I just love talking about Lego and uh, any review you throw at me, I can do it. Pretty much. Awesome. Cool. Kurt, do you have a favorite type of uh, content? I think honestly, like if I could do more stuff with the actual like mock interviews, that would be fun. I know we haven't been able to do that a lot due to the whole pandemic thing recently, but I would love to do more of that. Um, and then the second, I, the second favorite thing I've been enjoying, even though I guess I've only done one so far, like an actual set review would probably be the set review type stuff, but more so if it's like something that really, like I can really like have a passion for and relate yeah. to. And then that's when I really like enjoy doing it. Yeah. And Kirk, I was going to ask you, are you, you, uh, I really enjoyed your Ecto-1 video. It just came out like a week ago, right? Or, so, or two, a week and a uh, half ago or something like that. Yeah, something like um, that. Are you a big, you're kind of a big fan of like 80s 
yes. pop culture, right? Yes. So, okay. Okay. Cool. So yeah. you were that falls into the category of you were yeah. passionate about this because awesome. Exactly. Brian, what's your favorite kind of content? Favorite type to has to be the uh, the type where I get to talk to people that are in the Lego realm, but not necessarily about everything pertaining to Lego. Where I feel like a lot of creators, like you know, you three know about the brick, the building techniques, the mocks, the colors, the pieces, etc. I don't know the names. I don't know the colors, the build. I couldn't tell you. I know nothing. I know nothing at all. So rather than go from that approach, I would rather ask about, all right, what inspired you to do this? How did you logistically do this? What are, what are you passionate about? And talking to the, you know, like, let's say like a Jang Bricks or whoever, like, great. What's your favorite Lego set? <laughs> Obviously, all these questions you ask them before. What are the other types of questions that we don't know about these other types of people? Like what I want to get to know these creators of either a mock or a personality or whoever in a different sort of way. That's what I enjoy. And that's what I get to do on the quarantine cast when we have all these other people on. And that's what's going to happen probably for the, the 24 hour live stream as well. So I, I love getting to know people in that way, apart from just the brick and going beyond the brick. See what I did there? Ooh, nice, <laughs> did there? nice transition. Speaking of the 24 hour live stream, Golden Light Pictures says, how many of you will be on the 24 hour live stream? You'll all get to us. see me for all oh, 24 yeah. hours of it, baby. Woo! Yeah. Yes. Sweet. That's great. I will be there. I don't know how for how long. Yeah, I'm uh, gonna try to join as well. Yeah, for a few. Yes. There have there have been years in the past where I uh, made the same foolish mistake that uh, our friend Brian has made this year and and committed <laughs> to all 24 hours. No, I'm kidding. It's a blast. You're gonna have a great. Have you done all 24 before, Brian? I I have never done a 24 hour live stream of any kind. Uh, I've always said that I never wanted to do it solo and I wanted it to be for a very special occasion. And considering I've done the, the quarantine cast every Tuesday since probably April, I think it's very fitting that I'm the one who subjects himself to doing it and hopefully getting an, an all star cast of characters in to uh, keep me and Joshua awake and keep our sanities. So I'm excited. Awesome. I look forward to it. It's one of my favorite things every year. Even last year, I wasn't on for long, but I was. I joined the 24-hour live stream from the hotel where we stayed during uh, the shooting of Lego Masters Season 1. Mm -hmm. um, Jeff, I, I, can't, I can't prevent him from saying this. It's a, I'll allow it's fine. It's fine. I am immensely proud of those three gentlemen up there I have been a recent addition to all of their lives this year, and the fact that they have gone so far and done so much to enrich my life. thats I can't prevent someone from sharing that. Of okay, course. with Joshua, let me see if this is... Uh, okay. who who's, who's been on a tour, a floor tour with Joshua? I know you have, Brian. I have. Have either uh, of you... We have not. So no. maybe if, if you've seen a video, but maybe this is a question for Brian and myself. With jo From Red Brick Redemption, with Joshua Hanlon's self-admitted lack of pop culture knowledge, what mock uh, in what mock in any Beyond the Brick convention? I'm, we're, I'm, we're chuckling because he just popped into the, the waiting room. What mock in any Beyond the Brick convention tour were you most surprised he was actually able to recognize? And I threw in the actually. Um, what, uh, do you have an answer to that, Brian? I don't. So, so that was the beauty of of him bringing me on for for that latter half of Brick Fair Virginia was like I geeked out at all the Mario stuff, and it was a matter of you know, trying to explain to him why it was cool, which is half of why you are geeking out. You know, you got to explain it to them in plain English because, you know, they get very overwhelmed when they're on the job doing these convention tours. Got a lot of people that want to talk to them. So it's my job to, to really pave the way for them. Oh, they're in the room. Hi. Oh, what's going on? <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, Joshua and John Hanlon, Woo! the founders uh, the what? Uh, who? John, you're the you're the president of Beyond the Brick. Is that true? <laughs> we'll, go that. we'll go with that. Some, yes. and, some would say dictator. And and Joshua, you're the um, you're the the lead court jester or <laughs> the, the face, the face, the face, the face. The face. Yeah. All right. So we've got the muscle and the face. Yes, that's uh, accurate. 
when you look uh, at John, muscle is definitely yes. what comes to mind. I, I get I get that a lot. I get that a lot. <laughs> hey, I'm so pleased that you guys are here. Thank you for joining us. We're having a really fun time here on. I'm calling this the season finale, uh, season two finale of April Spotlight Live here on Boone Builds. Um, John, I didn't put you in the thumbnail because you usually don't appear in stuff. And I, I think that like when I when I ask you to to appear, in my mind, I'm thinking Josh and John are both gonna be on screen. And then sometimes you don't end up on screen. Like, like I think the first time I did the 24 hour live stream, I was like, Oh yeah, it's gonna be me and Josh, and and John will be there some, and then you were net well, you weren't <laughs> at all. No, I'm, I'm I, you. I'm you were there with just behind the scenes. So I'm uh, always trying to convince him to to go to show himself more, and he won't. He he doesn't like it. It's it's just it's strange to me because every time I get to like spend time with the two of you, it's <laughs> like it's like getting a a package, right? Like. John and Joshua, you get them both. If you're gonna have breakfast with John, you gotta have breakfast with Joshua. I'm sorry, um, I know it's unfortunate, isn't it? And, <laughs> two for and, the price um, of one. Yeah, two for the price of one. But then once we, I'm gonna remove here. Oh no, no, I just, I just stole it, Mike. Uh, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna remove Mike until he sits back down, so that we can see a little bit more of everyone. Um, so, so I was just—I'm surprised that you're here, but I'm so glad you are because I didn't—I didn't, I didn't want to be like. I think when I first reached out to you guys, I was like, "Hey, will you both be on?" And then as time went on, I thought, "Oh, it's just going to end up being Joshua and John will be there because because <laughs> John, be so John is there for the whole 24 hours." <laughs> no, the, the funny thing is that I'm I'm always there. You just can't see me. Yeah, right. I'm, I'm, I'm always there, <laughs> Pull, pulling the strings behind the scenes. <laughs> no, the, the funny thing though is we have such I think similar answers and similar experiences that that's that's why I I don't always I feel like having two of us in every conversation is is just like too repetitive because usually we have almost the same answer to every question so that's that's kind of that's my perspective on it. Well, you've been all the same places, right? Right, that's the thing. So like, why why have two of us when you could just have one? If if there was a Venn diagram of places. One circle is places Joshua has been, and the other circle is places John has been. How much of those circles would overlap? Is it like virtually in eclipse or uh, almost? Josh has been to two countries. I, I think. Have not that, been I to. think uh, Egypt and Vietnam are the only two countries uh, that I've been to that John has not made it to yet. But. You guys have each been to like 700 countries, so <laughs> that's a fairly 700, small... 721. So, 721. so it's almost an exact, uh, yes, exact be, eclipse. But besides those two countries, yes, it would be almost exact. <laughs> All right. Brian is still waiting for the day we uh, feed the lemurs on Madagascar, is it? Yes, yes. It's when you guys are so busy doing something else that's that you have to me and Kirk in charge of feeding <laughs> lemurs on Madagascar. Well, Brian, we got to bring you along. We got we to gotta bring you along to do that, Brian. Do you really? I want to go with you to the penguins. Not, forget the lemurs. Okay, oh, yeah. one or the other. You got to make up your mind. Let us know which one. Penguins. You want. I'll take the penguins. That's okay. fine. Yeah. That was a year ago. We were. Uh, yeah. Sorry, Boone. I, I should stop. I should actually let you. <laughs> no, this is great. This you is fun. To take this over. <laughs> my favorite. My favorite moments in my own live stream are when I can stop talking and just let the evening roll. So. So every week on Quarantine Cast, Brian takes over. So now Josh is taking this opportunity to take over. <laughs> I don't take over. He's the one who introduces the show, okay? No, it's actually I, Kirk who takes I, over. It's I really had true. so That's many true. thoughts on the new Mario sets, and Brian would not let me say a thing. <laughs> let, let me let me see if um we were in the middle of answering some uh, some chat live chat questions when you guys dropped in. So we'll just maybe do a couple more. And then we'll come back to grilling John and Josh about uh, other things. Uh, Larry Legond says to all, what's your proudest mock? The mock you're most proudest of. I don't build. You, no, you have no. a few. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, but not really like. You, you must know. be proud of one. Yeah. Yeah. I, well, it's actually torn apart. So you I guess. Can think I like about it. it. Kirk, you're proud of a mock. Okay. So I, I used to be proud of my Battle of Wakanda Forest mock that I made. You used to be? 
Used to be. That changed when I made that Spider-Man PS4 mock for Peter Parker's apartment. It's a good and one. then that video did like extremely well. And I was like, okay, this did way better than Wakanda. I didn't expect that to happen. This is my new favorite mock. And so just the amount, even like with the amount of detail that I put into that mock, I'm just like very proud of like how much I was able to capture and, and how accurate it was able to look. Awesome. Uh, Brian, did you think of your answer? Well, I, I did build uh, a mock based off of Balloon Pikachu from Pokemon Yellow that has since been taken apart because it got damaged at Brick Fair, Virginia. And I haven't made uh, another Pokemon creation yet because I've been busy with everything content-wise. But I plan on making another Pokemon-related thing soon, probably January, when I can take a little bit of a break. Um but that is what I would say. I have a lot of mocks that I have uh, had commissioned from people that I'm very proud to uh, own, but they're not my creations. So, yeah. Awesome. Um, mine, I don't know. What mock am I proud of? Um, uh, I'll say the antique fire engine from the Bricklink ADP. That was a, a fun accomplishment. Hey, a $9.99 super, $9 super chat from... Roy Hobbs, Roy says, are you guys at McDonald's? I, I wish I was, man. You want to stab me? You, at how did you know? <laughs> how did you figure it out? We, we oh, filmed wait, live we from, our, from our local McDonald's every night. <laughs> I didn't realize they have the red and the yellow like McDonald's. I thought that was like a... Like a no, I saw the comment in the chat. I'm reading the side oh. chat, and I just look over and I'm like, I know what he's talking about. <laughs> I have no idea. Hey, I uh, I painted this myself. This was this took quite oh. a while. So, uh, you know, this red and yellow. This is some real effort. Yes. yes. No, no one knocked the effort. <laughs> We're just saying it looks like McDonald's, which is fine. Oh, fine. but uh, but Boone, I wanted to answer your last question uh, about the the mock uh, favorite mock. Yes, uh, if I can. Um, so for me, so I, so I, you know, most of the time when, when like talking about mocks and like what we've personally built comes up, I say that I don't build much, which is true because for a number of years, ever since we got busy with beyond the brick, I haven't built a whole lot, but when I was younger, I built quite a bit. Um, and my, I did, a, I had a lot of, of fun builds, but I think my, my favorite might've been, um, one year I took, a I think it was like a 30 gallon fish tank. It was about like two to three feet wide. Filled it all the way up with water and then took, uh, I don't know if you guys remember from quite a number of years ago, there was like a, a red pirate ship set where the, the whole pieces where they weren't brick built, but the, the, the whole of the ship is like red. I think it was for like younger kids. So, so it wasn't a lot of actual like different pieces to it. If you guys remember that set. Anyway, I took that pirate ship set, um, put some like weight inside it so that it sank to the bottom and then had that on like the bottom of the fish tank, like an old pirate wreck. And then a bunch of the more modern like search and rescue ships and like dive vessels and all sorts of stuff and like some like submarines in the middle of the tank on top and it's like they had found this um pirate ship wreck and uh all these guys were going down and it was full of actual water so i had to keep everything like tied down and weighted properly so that uh stuff wouldn't float to the top or stuff wouldn't um fall down to the bottom of the tank that i didn't want down there so that was a super fun project i did that uh quite a number of years ago now uh, but that that might be my all-time favorite build. So um, Brett says, can we list Josh's top mocks? And I just I wanted to um, bring remind everyone of uh, of of this one where um, <laughs> we I, I I I had the pro I had the privilege of interviewing you um, during you know you were showing one of your most incredible mocks of all time. And it's uh, it's a sheriff. <laughs> I remember this. Oh, it's beautiful. <laughs> I I actually forgot about this. This is a close second <laughs> to that build I was just talking about. <laughs> so I think, I think the title says it's the best scarab, not not the, just a scarab. The yeah. best scarab. Um, <laughs> it it's it's really breathtaking. Um, so what I think Brett Brett and I were talking about this earlier. That's why I I had it ready. Um, he, he reminded me of this. So thank you very much, Brett Hooper. And, uh, wondering what can we expect to see next from you, uh, as a, as a master mock creator, Josh? Uh, probably not. I'm just going to pause it right there. I feel like that's a, 
<laughs> That's a great <laughs> time. Brian, who's, who's a Harry Potter fan and always trying to explain Harry Potter to me. <laughs> That's in the uh, unreleased, like, ninth movie. <laughs> it's not out yet. 2022. The holiday special for Harry Potter or something. Yes, you're right. That's, That's it. Jar -Jar. That's it. Yep. Yep. Um, all right. As far as uh, future builds, there's nothing on the horizon. Sorry for all the fans waiting out there. I have nothing. <laughs> He, he, he tends to publish his best mocks on April 1st. So check 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 around on April 1st and see what he comes out with. It's his very best work. <laughs> nice. All right. Um, D Golden Light says, did Josh actually go to uh, Notre Dame? Uh, no, I did not. But we live um, very near to South Bend. And so just big Notre Dame fans, especially um, their sports. Uh, so like right now, the football season is going on. They're undefeated, by the way, which is a very big deal uh, to anyone who lives in this area, but the rest of you probably won't care, so I understand. <laughs> um, <laughs> but, yeah, so my um, – like, our dad was, like, an usher at the stadium, the football stadium in Notre Dame before um, we were born and everything. So he grew up um, and lived around here and was a big fan, and then we've just grown up our whole lives watching all the Notre Dame sports and everything. So uh, that's – we're just, just big fans. But, no, we didn't go there. Awesome. Uh, hey, Brian, this uh, this is an exciting variation on one of the uh, less exciting questions you mentioned earlier. Uh, let's see. LTG Lego Train Guy says, to all, what are your favorite four <laughs> Lego sets? Have you ever had to answer that question before? What are your favorite four Lego sets? Who can rattle them off real quick? Uh, I can. Uh, Metal Beard's Pirate Ship, the Lego Super Mario Starter Course. Um, go to someone else. I forget. Uh, I no it's uh, Fort yes. Legorado, uh, the Pirates of Barracuda Bay, Ninjago City, and the Viking uh, Castle Fort set. If you remember the Vikings theme, I don't remember what that set was called, but the big fort from that theme That's a good I one. played a ton with growing up. Those are mine. Mike? Seven five one nine two Millennium Falcon, the Barracuda Bay from this year. Um, let's see, Ninjago City. I gotta join on that one. And the fourth one would be. If you don't say the Osprey after how much you talked about it. I will say the Osprey. <laughs> okay. And I'm good. not sure if the Osprey will be the first or no. I think it's gonna be actually the first as of there now because it was the Falcon, but the Osprey, man, the Osprey, yeah. Kirk, you got you got a top four. All right, so. Sanctum Sanctorum Showdown, Daily Bugle Showdown. Uh, there was a, I can't remember the name of it, but it was a creator three-in-one green robot. That was actually one of my first sets um, when I started building with Lego. And then, of course, I have to say this because it's true, the Ecto-1. Woo! All right. The, the new one. Yeah, the new one. The new one. Even though yeah. the, the one from uh, Brent is actually pretty cool as well. I actually want Awesome. To Thanks, Kirk. John, is uh, is this one of those times when your answer would be pretty much the same as Joshua's? Yes, this is this is one of those times where just one of us talks. <laughs> okay, awesome. Well, I listen, LTG Lego train guy. I this is a great question because almost everybody has answered the question, "What's your top Lego set?" over and over and over again. And I, you know, that um, the regulars here at Boone Builds can answer that question in the live chat for me because they've heard me say so many times. A lot of people have probably had to think of what their like top two or top three. Like that's a good, that's a question we probably all had to think through. Oh, what are your top three? But top four really makes you dig deep for that fourth favorite set. And I feel like it's thoughtful. It's interesting. It makes you go just a little bit deeper and, and I, and I like it. So I'm going to say um, these are my all-time top four favorite Lego sets. The Black Seas Barracuda, 1989. The, um, <laughs> strangely enough, the, the 1989 Batmobile, which was a 2019 set. Um, the brand new Ecto-1 is just amazing it might be my it might be at the top of my list but i haven't 
sat with it long enough to even trust myself to make that uh, that deep of a commitment in, in that decision. Um, and that leaves me with number four. And I got to think really hard about what my number four favorite Lego set would be. Um, and I feel like I can't pick one. Um, I, okay. I'm going to say, Ooh, I'm going to say Voltron. Um, and I want, I want to say, I want to say, um, the, the, the ship in a bottle, just because I have so much dang respect for that set. And, um, my buddy Jake, who was the fan designer of that set, but I, I think ship in a bottle is probably in my top five. And, uh, I'd say Voltron is probably in my top four. I might change my mind about those, but again, I think that's the four, the four question. That's a really good one. Susan Carey says, what is a mock newbie here? Who wants to answer that one? Mock stands for my own creation. My own creation. So mock means anything that you designed yourself. Mike? I'm a total newbie in mocks. Absolutely. You... I made two mocks in my life that mm. I can call mocks. <laughs> That's pretty much it. Were, were you proud of either of them? I was actually it, two mocks is a stretch because first <laughs> mock was the beginning and then the expansion I consider this a second mock. I build um, when I got back from um, from my dark days of Lego, I built you guys probably are familiar with the show called the Top Gear, mm -hmm. which is uh, a big it was like one of my favorite shows. It, it still is one of my favorite shows of all time now in the form of the Grand Tour on Amazon with Jeremy Clarkson, uh, James Hammond and um, uh, and Mr. May the captain slow and I built uh, their studio from the old days of Top Gear, the, the one when they had the um, car engine in the front and the, the seats around it and like the lights. So when they used to have the old format on the old Top Gear, when they would have bits in the studio, uh, sitting with the audience around them, I built that kind of scene. Uh, and I also built the second part of that mock was the Top Gear logo made from Lego with all like the grinding gear and the top gear size in like built brick built a uh, fashion, which I, I didn't use just the plate and just place tiles on it. But I built like a 3D logo of that show because I, I built it specifically for the launch of the Grand Tour as Amazon picked them up. I love this show so much. I just had to do something about it. So that was awesome. the only ever mock I ever made. <laughs> Incredible. I love it. I love it. So glad. All right, Josh, John. How long have you guys been doing Beyond the Brick now? How long has it been a thing? It, it was uh, it was the what was the the original podcast called? The approaching ten years. Go ahead. Uh, the, wow. the original podcast was uh, called a look at a Lego. look at Lego. Yep, there you go. I um, remembered it the moment you said it. The very first episode was November 11, twenty eleven. So we just had our nine year anniversary of the very first podcast uh lego content we ever produced congratulations <laughs> thank you so yes I, uh, it, so yeah that was all audio only um for the first like uh year year and a half we did go we did go and cover brickwood chicago about six months and we would have been in june of 2012 so just about six months after we did our first episode um but the, the podcast itself was audio only for the first like year and a half Awesome. And uh, how long have you been doing the uh, the 24-hour live stream? This is the seventh year. So we actually okay. started that uh, pretty soon into, into our Beyond the Brick run. Um, I had seen various uh, like gamers that did, uh, did that sort of thing. And then also, um, Boone, I know you're very familiar with like Vlog Brothers, John and Hank Green. They do a right. similar type of thing where they have a, a very long... I think it's even longer than 24 hours. I forget exactly how long they they go with different people um, every year for charity. So I'd seen different channels and people that did that sort of thing. And I was like, this would be super cool. Um, I was had interviewed Nanon on the show and was familiar with Creations for Charity and uh, was a big fan of Nanon's work and what he did with Creations for Charity and really wanted to be able to support the charity somehow. Um, and back then, obviously, we were, were very small. Uh, we didn't really have any money to do anything with, but I knew if we could... Um, do some kind of live stream that would get 
uh, people to donate sets and donate some money, then that would be a good way to support the charity. So uh, next year, you said November will be 10 years? Yes, yeah. One, so so we've, we've just passed nine. Is there going to be an awesome, incredible, beyond the brick 10-year celebration next but, fall? Uh, there should be. We should definitely work on that. I don't know, John, have, do you have any ideas? We have not thought that far ahead. <laughs> okay. Which, which okay. means that they're flying all of us out to do 24 hours together in real life. <laughs> I <laughs> hope were... the Wi-Fi on the cruise ship is high quality. <laughs> That's a great you idea. Know, we'll add that to the list. They have those test that... cruises right now. They actually ask people to go on a cruise because everybody's freaking out. There you go. Let's do <laughs> it. Test cruises. <laughs> Should be cheap. So. <laughs> is it test cruise? Is that like... <laughs> Go on the cruise, and how fast do you get coronavirus? Is that what they're testing? Yeah. Like, what are they testing? But wow. when you're raising money for kids along the way, it's it's not fine. No, we should be responsible, but you know, we will we will start taking ideas for what we should do for our 10 year anniversary. So feel free, uh, folks, if you have any ideas, uh, let us know. We could spend like two hours talking about it next Friday because in like four in the morning. There you like go. Four. Just just hashing stuff out. Yeah. So is there anything new for uh, this year's, anything new and exciting we should expect for this year's 24-hour live stream? Um, I think I think mostly you're going to get the spiciness that Brian brings to it. As his, his first time uh, doing the 24-hour live stream, first time he's done a 24-hour stream of any kind, let alone Beyond the Brick or anywhere, which means, I mean, even he doesn't know what, what his body will be doing mentally and physically by the time that we reach the end of the 24 hours. So that that's just going to be something to behold. I'm personally looking forward to that very much. I would pay to see that. I'm <laughs> really. I'm, you don't even have to pay. It's all for free on Beyond the Brick. It's going to happen no matter what. No, I'm really make, looking like, forward to boxing that. Fights yeah, I'm really pay, looking pay forward to like, event. <laughs> I'm really looking forward to seeing Brian at like 7 a.m. Oh. <laughs> Like, I don't, I don't, I don't, 9 like 4, a.m. 4 p.m. on Saturday. I, uh, that's I think four. You know, right before, shortly before it ends. That's uh, that's always the best. I don't yeah. think any of you know what you're asking for. I've never been awake for 24 hours in any given time, let alone being on camera for 24 hours. I structure my live streams around doing an hour and a half, so that way I'm not going for long periods of time, so I don't go delirious. So now it's just going, you know, throwing it all at the wall. I'm. I don't know, man. We'll I see. still can't believe you've never been awake for 24 hours, Brian. No, That's I'm crazy. lazy. I, I. You think I went to college to study on papers and? No. <laughs> what am I gonna do? <laughs> what? What do you do in college? Somebody help. <laughs> I don't know yet. We'll. We'll figure it out. <laughs> All right, uh, John. As the person who is sort of, you have your hands on the reins of the business that is beyond the brick. That's true. Right. Definitely. Um, how have you felt, uh, about th the future of beyond the brick in a time such as this, where there are no live Lego conventions going on? How has, how has the, how has it evolved? What should we expect to see in the future? Well, that's a very interesting question. So, uh, yeah. So in the past, we have heavily relied, obviously, on Lego events. That, that's basically been all we've done. Um, and I would say the Facebook page has become much more important over the last uh, year, and especially this, this, this year, uh, obviously, as all events have been canceled. So that is uh, where we're focusing a lot on these days. Um, that's primarily my focus on a day-to-day -day basis is on the Facebook page. So obviously we're waiting for events to get back up and running and we're looking forward to attending Lego events again. Um, but until that happens, we're doing live streams and whatever. We've had a, a number of people who have like sent us mock videos and that type of thing, which is always great. Sometimes people will just reach out and say, Hey, I just built this incredible thing. Would you like to feature it on beyond the brick? And we're we say yes, absolutely. So that provides some great content. Um, and then sometimes we'll see somebody's photos or something and reach out to them and say, hey, could you guys shoot a video of this for us? Um, so we've had a number of those over the last few months as events have been canceled. So those have been really great because we've still been able to show off some incredible mocks. 
And then besides that, obviously, it's been the live streams. We started up the Lego Ideas show that we now do every Friday, which had actually been, funny enough, an idea that we've had for years of doing an, a Lego Ideas show. And because we were traveling all the time, we could never do it. So uh, as a result of events being canceled, we finally started doing that. And now we've been doing that. I don't know how many months that's been going on now, but all, all, all summer, I think, we, we did that and have continued it. So... It's, it's been an opportunity to kind of focus in other areas. We were always so busy with travel and so busy to, with going to events that we could never do some of these other things. But we've transitioned pretty well into making it work uh, with uh, especially Facebook. Uh, Facebook has been massive for us. Um, so we're, we're at almost 2 million followers on Facebook, which is, uh, you know, we're over double what we are on, on YouTube, which is just crazy because we've been on YouTube for nearly 10 years and, and Facebook is a much newer thing, but it's really exploded in growth. So, um, so yeah, the plan I think is to continue doing all of that until hopefully events will be back next summer. It's looking like, um, you know, something like Brickwood Chicago in June might be the first event of the year where ho hopefully that'll happen. And then we'll get back to more events happening after that. But yeah, our, our at, at first you would think that you know that we would be running into some major problems, but we've been able to transition um, fairly well between the live streams and a, a bigger focus on Facebook. Awesome, uh, Isaiah Arnold. We we were talking about the twenty four hour twenty four hour live stream. Isaiah asked, "When is the twenty four hour live stream?" You guys can probably rattle that off. Uh, yes. Yeah, so so it is November 27th. It starts at 5 p.m. Eastern time, and it goes all the way until 5 p.m. on November 28th. So that's the Friday and Saturday after Thanksgiving here in the U.S. Uh, a week from today. Yes. It's a, a, week a, day. a week and a day from today. Correct. Exactly. So uh, you can find... Find all the info. Um, if you go over to Beyond the Brick, we have a video that Brian and I recorded going over everything. Or you can also go to the creationsforcharity.org is the website where you can find all the info about Creations for Charity. There's still a bunch of super cool custom minifigs and custom builds and creations that are for sale. So if you want to support the charity through that, uh, totally, totally go over and buy one of the cool builds that are for sale over there because there's some awesome stuff. Awesome. Cool. Well, thank you for that. I'm going to put uh, – it's a – creationsforcharity.org. Yep. Um, let's see. We're going to pop that right across the bottom. Does that look right? Creationsforcharity.org? Yep, exactly right. So, yeah, we've so got, we've got a out. blog post over there on the blog section where uh, people can fill out a form if they want to join us on the live stream. They can also donate on the Tiltify campaign and enter a raffle to win the Diagonally Lego set as well. So the the big $400 set, which a uh, copy of which Brian will be building on the 24-hour live stream as well. So um, you can you can get his hands-on thoughts on that as the stream goes on. Uh, still not sure if he's going to finish the whole thing or not. Awesome. Yeah, he'll finish. He'll finish. It's it's not uh, a... <laughs> it's it's uh, fine. But Boone, I like to talk a lot, you know? So... I don't know. We'll see. You might not. You might not finish. I um, I, I'm sure that this has to do with um, some shenanigans that were going on in the live chat earlier, but I'm going to ask it anyway because it has a question mark at the end. From Jeff McElwee, uh, do I need – oh, this was actually a question for Brett Hooper, but I'll ask you guys. Do I need to get the Thunderdome? Yes. Brian, does yes, Jeff need absolutely. to get the Thunderdome? There is no uh, timeline that exists where you do not get the Thunderdome. So okay. please – enact the thunderdome whatever that means all right we yeah. jeff go ahead and get the thunderdome yep get it <laughs> all right we got creations for charity is back up there okay uh i'm gonna hide this and uh and then we're gonna go back to a little bit of fun um round robin hey if uh perry is watching perry i'd love to hear one of your incredible questions if you can hit me with one of your tasty perry type cues that would be great um Oh, Perry, yeah, I, he he always has the best stuff. I just ran, <laughs> I sent it to John the other day. I just ran across this Facebook message that I screenshotted the other day from it was like a year ago or something that Perry sent it to me, and it was this, me this long message about how he had had like a dream where he where like we we forced him to be a contributor for Beyond the Break and like sent him what was that show we we sent him to some show. I forget what it was. Uh, and he was like, 
like in the dream he's like why am i here i'm like completely unprepared he looks like like we, he was supposed to be asking all these questions and he didn't know what he was doing and this had all happened and then he he, he laid this all out in this message to me and i just ran across that again recently and i was like this is so amazing <laughs> Perry's good. Perry was like, um, I think one of the good Perry questions is uh, if you, I'll go ahead and ask this one. If you had to live the rest of your life as a Lego element, which Lego element would you live the rest of your life as? Brian. Oh. Uh, for me first, uh, one of those uh, splat technic gear things the new piece oh yeah the yeah in medium azure if i can pick a color <laughs> right i thought you were gonna I... say like mario's hat or something ah uh, that's a better answer let's go with that <laughs> <laughs> mike oh gee that's a i i want to be like one of those old 45 degree slope computers from classic space to travel with the lego set yeah, you know, the one with the, like the print and like a little of a little bit of a texture, so I can be like looking at the ship and going places, you know. <laughs> uh, brick, brick Star Wars, but yeah, uh, Mike, I love those elements, especially like the printed ones from Classic Space. Yeah, those the are old great. prints, right? The forty-five degree, the, the two yeah. by two by two. Yeah, they're lovely. Uh, brick Star Wars boy says, "Who's Perry? I don't know. Perry's my buddy." We, you, Josh, you know Perry, right? Perry, do, he's, yeah. he's I mean, been here. Know you... Perry, but what are you even doing? <laughs> All right. Hendrix <laughs> had a nice. Uh, uh, who wants to be Mario's pants? <laughs> Mario's pants. Kirk, did you have an answer to the uh, what? What oh, element would you be? I'm trying to think. This honestly, like Perry, just asked a very uh, interesting question. I, I've never thought of that. I'm gonna say. Brick separator because no one ever uses it. Oh, what no one ever uses it? I have two oh, right it? here. Yeah, oh, I feel no. Here's the thing, though. I feel like yeah, everyone has a bunch them. of brick separators, including myself, and we still, at the end of the day, either using our fingernails or something else yeah. of some sort, and it's just like they just sit there. It's I, literally, <laughs> yeah. I don't. I don't Hold I on. don't use a brick separator unless I absolutely have to. Yeah. I will I will go to like the fingernails first because they're already attached. I use it all the time. What are you just talking about? <laughs> well, well, hold on. Would you be the orange brick separator, the, the turquoise, the gray, or the thick separator? Which one would you be? Ooh. I'm going to go thick separator. Oh, cool. Yeah, and that's the right part. answer. Okay, everyone wants to be the thick separator. <laughs> no, <it's> <laughs> all right. Uh, Brett Hooper with a five dollar super chat. We're gonna call this a five dollar Hooper chat, um, or mm -hmm. or a super Hooper or something like that. From Perry, which famous actors would you cast to play Mark and Boone in a film about Lego Masters? Oh man, this you need, really need to think on this one. <laughs> uh. I I would say for Boone, the first name that came to mind, John Favreau. I don't know why. Oh, oh first, with a beard? That's a good one. Yep. First first name. I don't know. So we can roll with that. I think I think Favreau could play me. Yeah. Yeah. He's, yeah. He he'd need to wear lifts, I think, but um, you know, for most of the show you, you probably wouldn't it wouldn't matter. Um, let's see, Mark. I, there is a there is a guy you guys would probably recognize from something. Um but there's a guy named Mark Boone Jr. <laughs> and, um, and and he, he's this guy. He's from he's from Lost. He's from Walking Dead. Um, so you might recognize him from some stuff. But uh, his name is Mark Boone. That was so <laughs> so strange. Um, and 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 he could sort of play uh, both of us at the same time. Um, and Hagrid as well. They would just um, yeah, mirror like the Hagrid. footage. It's fine. Who played Hagrid in Harry Potter? Who played Hagrid? I don't know. Who played Hagrid in Harry Potter? Who played Hagrid? His name was Robbie Coltrane, and it actually looks like looks like he um 
is is generally pretty. We'll we'll pop over here. It looks like Robbie is generally fairly uh, clean cut, so he doesn't usually have the big beard and hair. Uh, but what I, I I still stick to John Favreau for Boone at very. I like it. I like it. That was a good choice. Um. Uh. Let's see. For Mark, I'm trying to think of who could play Mark in a movie. Um. I'll I'll think about it. I'll think about it. He he's just he's unmatched to me. So. Oh, and Red Brick Redemption says Mark Boone Jr. was in the Mandalorian. How about oh, that? There you go. Hmm. All right. Yeah. Yeah, he was. You're right. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, Dave, uh, thanks for that, Brett. Thanks for your hoop, uh, your Hooper chat. Um, Dave Morgan, with ten dollars, so a fantastic cast of characters on tonight's stream. Thanks all of you. That's not a question. Thank you Thank so you much, guys. Dave. Thank you, Dave. You're already working here. You shouldn't be paying me. <laughs> Um, <laughs> thank you so much, Dave. We really appreciate it, buddy. You're you're awesome. Um, all right, John and Joshua, um, well, make oh, something up. What? Real quick, I, I never I never got a chance to answer the the element question of what. Oh, what I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, Go for it. <laughs> I just want I just want to make sure I get in on these. You know, my um, bad. <laughs> uh, I would be. Uh, you remember the the older um, shooters that shot the the missiles with like the rubber tips on the end? They're like black. Uh, those, yes, that, that would that's the element I would be that 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 cannon element uh, with the rubber tip shooter on it. Wow, I could not <laughs> forget about those. Very I love that element. Very I have one right over here. No, they're amazing. They, they, like so many of the sets I grew up like they were in like old castle sets and stuff like from the nineties. So, like that stuff we grew up playing with. Had a ton of those. They were in a bunch of the Expo Four sets. I remember that a bunch from that. Uh, I love those elements. I want to see someone take the Ecto One, the new Ecto One from uh, the eighteen plus line, and somehow mash it up with Exo Force and call it Ecto Force. <laughs> I don't know if that's a good idea or not. I, don't, I would I don't finally care about Ghost Ghostbusters if that happened. Did you say you would finally care about Ghostbusters? Yeah. Get out! So, be gone. <laughs> Go away. Ooh. Ooh. Ouch. <laughs> Ouch. I mean, I, I, I've just never seen Ghostbusters, so I actually don't know if I would oh. like it or not. I at some point I'll sit down and watch it. Just just sit down, watch the first two. Hey, go. Don't They're worry off. about it. So no, 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 no. <laughs> Doesn't matter anymore. Doesn't matter. Sorry, I just had to put you on a 10 second timeout for that. <laughs> you know, it's your stream, you've got to do what you have to do to keep order, Boone. It's okay. <laughs> Uh, Brent Waller says, you're dead to me, Joshua. <laughs> oh, man. Brent Waller, the idea is baller. That's, I'm glad I came up with that tonight. Um, <laughs> That's a good one. Sorry, didn't mean to do that. Okay, um, so Joshua and John, I feel like this is actually a, a, a pretty decent segue. I'd like each of you, if you're willing, to make something up about Star Wars. Oh, this is going to be good. <laughs> Wow. Okay. <laughs> do, um, do you want it to like, like a storyline or a fact or just just anything? It it doesn't matter. You're <laughs> overthinking the question. <laughs> Don't think too hard. Okay. It's the first thing that comes to mind. This is, this is like a like a writing prompt. <laughs> yeah. Um, what do you got? <laughs> it's got to be something Jar Jar related. We'll start start there. Start there. My favorite character. Uh, where do we go from there? What if Jar Jar was a Jedi? Yeah, that's good. <laughs> Jar Jar was a Jedi, wasn't he? What, what, what is a <laughs> Jedi? No? What is a Jedi? Joshua is like, wait, Jedi, I heard that once. <laughs> <laughs> I heard it somewhere. I know I did. <laughs> here, here, I'll give you a. I think I know. I think I know. I know what it is. Uh, there we go. There we go. Inspiration. Inspiration. <laughs> um, mood, mood card. Brian Sorry. was Brian was secretly the one in the Jar Jar suit the whole time. That's that's your Star Wars. No, fan. that that's a fact. You can't tell the people that it's behind the scenes <laughs> DVD out. content. <laughs> Dang it! Oh well. <laughs> All right, that was Joshua's. John, you got one. Uh, I, I don't know. I might steal his answer again. That was so good. <laughs> <laughs> so we recently discovered that Brian is actual Luigi, so I, I totally believe that he is he is uh 
he is Jar Jar as well. There All are, right. There are so Incredible. many roles that he just seamlessly takes on. I mean, have you heard his impersonation that he does of people like Kurt? Yes, <laughs> oh, I did that at the beginning of the show. The people oh, have Oh, nice. Yes. 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 I was I okay. was listening. Um, I was rewatching the stream from the other day with the quarantine cast, the final one, and I'm just like, "This is what happens." I'm, I'm several thousand feet in the air, and, and this is what's happening while I'm away. It, it, it's a you, shame. That would have happened even with you in the room, man. I know. I know. And that's the beauty. I know. in the room, Kirk. Yeah. That's, oh God. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so now we're going to go around the other way. Uh, we'll do Brian, Kirk, Mike. You each need to ask John and Joshua a question of your own. Okay. Brian, Kirk, and Mike, think about it. You've each got a question for Josh and John. Brian's Brian's the guinea pig. We have to answer it? <laughs> you yes. can, you get, can yeah, yes. yeah. get up and walk away. <laughs> okay. If you had to pick an animal mascot from your travels to represent beyond the brick, what would it be? Oh, good job. Good job, Brian. That was a good, that was a good <laughs> question. I was like, hey, where are those Dunkin' Donuts gift cards? No, 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 no. I asked an actual actual question this time. <laughs> That's deep. That's deep. Yes. Oh, from our travels. So this would be like something we've seen like in person in some place yes. we've traveled. Maybe the penguin? The penguin does come to mind. Uh, you know, a year ago we were we were in Antarctica looking at penguins. Um, it could it could be a yellow and red penguin. That would actually be kind yeah, of catchy. Right, that's good. That's good. Uh, what what kind of animal do we feel like an animal has the vibe like the the spirit of beyond the brick? So just death, imagine the animal body. has to be able. They have to be able to wear the red shirt. What would look good in the red shirt? There you go, Winnie the Pooh. I'm sorry. There it is. <laughs> 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 oh it just came to you so suddenly you couldn't help it. I understand. <laughs> I couldn't help it. I'm sorry. Uh, maybe the koala. The koala could wear a wear a red shirt. Maybe. Yes, that's a good one. Yeah, yeah. That's a that's a that's an animal that I feel like I embody uh, as a person. Yeah, I see that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Did, did meet, uh... John and I have discussed that before. <laughs> you meet. You meet. You meet koalas in Indiana? Uh, no, in Australia we did though. <laughs> not, not a lot in Indiana. <laughs> oh, well, I you know I just figured that's a lot of in Indiana. <laughs> okay. Um, there's just a lot of deer that run around in Indiana. Um, Corn. Yeah, we've had some foxes living in our backyard, which is kind of cool. Uh, recently, yeah, it's been kind of neat actually. It's like a little nature preserve in our backyard. Wow. <laughs> that that's amazing. I, I think we can stop. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, Kirk, you got a Kirk, you got a question for uh, for John and Josh. Does it have to be like a silly question, or can it be a serious question? It can be a serious question. It can be a serious question, okay. Because I've always wondered this. I I never got to ask them as much as we've been doing quarantine cast. What was the reason why you guys picked me? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, just, oh. I'm just curious. I'm curious. I never. I never. Oh, I snap. It, was just, it just happened. This is the I, great moment to kick him out. I just, I'm just, I'm just curious. <laughs> I, I, wanted to see, I wanted to see more of Brian's reaction to that question. <laughs> we all have reason to ask that question ourselves. But again, <laughs> to be fair, but that's a good question, Kirk. Are you talking specifically about quarantine cast or? No, or I'm, I'm just talking about in general about being a part of the team, like contributor. Um, um, mostly because we we like your work. Uh, you have a good voice for for what you do. Um, as Brian, as, yes, points as Brian out, demonstrates. Um, so that's very helpful. Uh, and then uh, your your knowledge base is also helpful. So th the things you're knowledgeable in. Uh, are areas that we are not knowledgeable in. <laughs> they missed an 80s nerd who knows his stuff. Basically. That is they true. explain they Star wanted, Wars they to them and they explain Ghostbusters to them. Yeah. <laughs> and like superhero yeah. stuff and everything. Um, uh, and then, yeah, obviously you're, it, it's also always helpful when someone's like passionate about what we do at Beyond the Brick and familiar what we with what we do and everything and we just feel like they'd be a good... Um, fit for, for the team. That's all I'm gonna say. <laughs> when was the first time we met you? I actually don't. It was it 
the first oh, time we met, I, no, it was Philly Brickfest when you guys. Oh, oh yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. And then did you did you respond when we uh, a couple of years ago when we made a video asking for? Mm -hmm. Okay, so that was how we first. That was yeah, how, that's we, how we first that. started like the whole process thing, and then you guys got, got back and were like, "Hey, we want you to work in this video," and I'm just like, "Oh, okay, let's do it." Yeah, great. <laughs> All right, Mike, uh, you got a question? I should ask the same question. <laughs> <laughs> this has become a, become a really comfortable space for all of us. Uh, absolutely. No, I, I do have a That's question. Goal, you know, we want everyone to feel at home here. <laughs> <laughs> I do have a question. Like, um, If you guys were not into Lego and still wanted to do YouTube, what would you do? Good um, question. At so we if have, you were not we, into Lego, I still wanted to do videos. What would it be about? If you wanted to like, have a channel. I would definitely do something like tech-related, uh, tech news or like smartphone reviews or that type of thing. I actually did some of that. That was actually sort of what got Joshua into podcasting is I hosted a tech news podcast before a look at Lego uh, that shut down, I don't, I don't know when it was, a number of years ago now. And so I would definitely be doing something related to tech news, which is a very saturated field on YouTube. But uh, I still enjoy sort of following tech news a little bit. Um, but that, that's what I would be doing. Before I give my answer, I want to give a shout out to some of these comments here. Uh, Joseph Sawada says, corn husk doll making tutorials. Oh <laughs> and says, cheese it reviews. Both solid, <laughs> solid answers. <laughs> <laughs> two things i'm very passionate about <laughs> but um the real answer for me would be definitely um something history related which we actually kind of do so we have a channel called destinations of history that's a travel slash history channel and there's jake no yes jake knows me good <laughs> uh that's there, yes i'm very predictable people what can i say <laughs> um so we kind of already have that channel that we we record stuff for when we travel. So you know this year we haven't done a whole lot for it, um, but that that type of channel with like a history educational uh, focus would definitely be um, what I would what I would focus on. Joshua just honestly just strikes me more so as like the tour guide that you would see at like a museum, like that type of guy. Like you just walk in there, just like okay, we're gonna go to the left, we're gonna go to the right. Starting at the left, here's your statue right here, and just this this guy just giving you a bunch of facts that you're probably not going to remember at the end of the tour, but he's going to remember every last one of them. <laughs> you get Museum it. studies was part of my my college degree that I got with history, um, and that's something I've always been like absolutely love museums, visit them as much as I can, yeah. and definitely have. Um, if I wasn't a YouTuber, would would probably be working in a museum. Yeah, and I honestly think it would fit you. I honestly do that. That's now. good. Thank you. I, I I need you as a uh, uh, <laughs> um, recommendation when I go to get a piece. Of, yeah. Just just a piece of paper that says I think it would fit you. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I uh, wanted to ask you this one. You know, when we go to Lego fan conventions, the the Lego community, the Lego fan community spans age ranges. You know, from there's there's very young people involved. There's kids, you know, of course, are very into the products. Um, and and then we have some some people who continue being invested into the hobby uh, long into their uh, experienced adulthood. Um, so Joshua and John, I'm curious, do you see yourselves? continuing to go to Lego conventions and continuing to have that camera out and rolling uh, mock interviews when you're 40, when you're 50, when you're 60? What do you think? Are you always going to be into this or uh, does the future hold something other than be on the brick for you? Uh, I don't, I don't know. That's the, the plan. The plan right now is to continue as long as we can, but um, I guess it depends. It's always a funny thing with YouTube and I, I think everybody on this uh, conversation knows it from their work with creating videos. Uh, YouTube's a funny thing because you never, you kind of always are waiting for the moment when the views disappear and, and it's kind of like, okay, you know, we, we ran you know, as best as we could. We, we had a great time and, and now it's time to move on. And we've really been in that. And I've heard other creators talk about that as well. Uh, we've really that's always been our approach to it. So if one day we woke up and it was, you know, it was gone and, and we dropped, uh, you know, six views a day, 
uh, we would move on to something else. So as of right now, we're, we're continuing uh, with, with what we've been doing and that's the plan for now, but, um, there's always, always another option. Um, so yeah, I don't know. John, yeah, I think that, that sums it up nicely. We've, I mean, I, I don't know what the perception is that we give off with the channel or what people think watching, but there has never been like a master plan here with beyond the brick, like at all. Um, you know, it started with the podcast originally where like super casual, I basically was just in high school and had too much time on my hands. It was like, I want to do something like fun and interesting. So why don't I start this podcast where I can talk about Lego and chat with other people. And then it was just very natural growth from there as we were like, well, there's this big show in Chicago. So let's go to that and interview people. Let's try to go to more shows and just keep it just built very naturally. Um, but we never sat down in the early days and have never really sat down and been like, okay, here's our timeline. Here's, here's our goal, that sort of thing. Um, it's really just take it as it comes and, and see what we can do. Uh, Debo Bricks, AKA Don Brickles rephrased my question. I just think it's worth showing what's beyond beyond the brick. Right, I think you've touched on that. Um, you're welcome to say I love the name Don Brickles, by the way. I think that's Don Brickles, great. yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's a good one. Uh, Cody Otley with a $20 super chat. Cody, thank you Hi. so much, buddy. You guys are awesome. May the brick be with you and Hooper always. I think, and, and Brett? Um, well, we could have had Brett in here tonight. What's, what's beyond Beyond the Brick? Yeah, okay. Let's see. I don't see any more questions here other than Jeff McElwee says, so would Josh and John move on to Mega Constructs then? That's that's what's beyond Beyond the Brick. Yeah. I don't I don't think that's on the other the other side of Beyond the Brick. I don't think anywhere anywhere lands us with Mega Constructs at this beyond point. Beyond the other interlockable bricks. <laughs> yeah. I think Brian yeah, has right. that co yeah, covered yeah. already with uh oh, yeah. um Lincoln Logs Larry and uh, Connects Kenny. Yes, there is an entire ensemble of the Building Brick Band uh, brands. Uh, yes, uh, there's Connects Kenny, Lincoln Log Larry, Mega Constructs Connie, Bricks O'Brien in the flesh. Mega uh, Constructs Connie! Yes. yes. <laughs> I'm surprised that was the one that got you. That's the one. That's, all right. No, it's, it's well, fine. It just sounds so like corporate, and then you just put someone's name yeah. there. <laughs> <laughs> there's a whole there's a whole so you know when you walk into Chuck E. Cheese, you see all the animatronics, it's the same thing, except when Beyond the Brick opens up one of those entertainment centers. They're all gonna be up on here just like that. You know, same idea. Same idea. Oh man. To, to touch oh, on boy. a bit more though on what John was saying in regards to like how if the views just like drop down, that's it's all gonna end. Essentially what he's saying, Brian, Mike, and myself, and Boone and anyone else that is a contributor, is that when the, when the views drop, we're out of here. We're fired. We lose our jobs. That, that, that's basically what no, I can confirm done. that. That That is true. I'll confirm that. Yeah. Okay. Um, here's a, just a fun one for all of you in in the in on the screen. I, I will ask real quick. Uh, it's what are we are we getting close to 11 p.m. your time? Uh, it's, yeah, uh, yeah, well, it's 20 minutes away. Yeah. 20 minutes away. Are you cool going till 11? Is yeah, anyone sure. anyone yeah. not able to go for another twenty minutes? I'm good. I'm good. We're good. good. Okay, cool. If you if you need to bounce out, you're welcome to. But we're gonna go for another twenty minutes. I knew this would be a fun one. We we started at the normal time. We got John and Josh a little bit before the hour, um, so uh, we'll just push forward here. I think that it would be fun if we answered a question like, if you, uh, if you had to invent one of the next collectible minifigures what what would the character be what accessories would they have what would they be wearing a question for me <clears throat> anyone mike kirk brian josh john john especially john's the one i'm really especially interested to hear from on this one <laughs> i'll start I, I, how about youtuber youtuber there you go yeah, yeah. yeah. got to go with that yeah. they got the camera uh, oh, Casey, nice stuff. play button. Easy. Yeah, play button, camera. Um, what else? What else does a YouTuber look like? And what? What, what are the stereotypical YouTubers? Uh, bottle Green Mountain Dew. 
Oh yeah, blue blue uh, hair, Mountain Dew. Yes, yeah, yeah. yes. Yeah, no, it's not a gamer. Yeah. That's 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 different. We got, right. we got the that, we, we already got uh, the gamer. Jack's cool. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So we, <laughs> we gotta have like a laptop that has a clickbait title on it and yeah. metrics going down. Yeah, laptop, like, yeah, laptop, little, little like play button, like gold play button. Yeah, like yes, yes. Well, John, good answer. Good answer. I wish I wish everyone had. Thank you. I wish everyone had contributed their opinions to your answer a little bit more, but um, <laughs> but that's fine. Joshua, you got one. Uh, so I so for me, my mind definitely went to like what is what is a historical character they haven't done, but they've they've done a lot of historical characters that are, and so they they've covered that pretty well. I like what Red Brick Redemption says with a Napoleon Bonaparte with the short kid legs. <laughs> that that would be pretty and funny. A huge hat. Um, so. <laughs> Uh, I don't think they would ever make a Napoleon Bonaparte. Like uh, at first, I was gonna say something. I because my when it, when when the topic of like what's a theme uh, that I would want comes up, I'm always like like something ancient Greek or Roman. But they've actually made a lot of those minifigs in individual formats in in the collectible minifigures. So they've kind of covered a lot of those pretty well. Um, so I don't know. Uh, this is this is a tough one. They've they've met a lot of cool stuff. If 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 one if someone else has one that, that they're ready to 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 say, then I might need some time thinking about it. I was gonna say I actually called this a Napoleon. Napoleon uh, brick apart. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Kirk <laughs> buries his face. All right, Brian. What what's your uh, collectible minifigure? If you had to come up with one tomorrow. They, they right. you get an email from whoever's in charge over there and they say, Brian, we need one from you. All right. Well, I will I will do one that is, you know, a personal request of mine that would open up possibilities. Oh, Jeff knows where this is going. Um, <laughs> oh, no, he's saying to, to the, the bricks. Okay, cool. Yeah. Um, I would say that we would get a, obviously, a, a Lego Mario thing. We'd get an officially uh, molded custom head on a Lego Mario minifigure, but instead of it being the normal Mario, it would be a translucent rainbow Mario for when he gets the invincibility star in the games. How they would pull it off? No idea, but it would be all the different colors, all meshed in, all translucent uh, rainbow colors. Lenticular. So when you rotate it, it like changes. Yeah. That'd be great. Yeah, that, that's, that, that's, that's gonna I happen. And that's he, gonna and he happen in the, the future. I that's really awesome. hope so. And he has the invincibility star with him. So that's what I would say. Yeah. Huh. Kirk, you got a you got a original custom, uh, not custom, but a collectible minifigure idea. Wait, so it can't be licensed? It has to be my own concept. No, no, no. It it, it could be oh, licensed. Brian's okay. was licensed. I just mean right. I mean one that hasn't been done before. Oh, okay. Uh, Stan Lee, hands down. It hasn't That's happened great. yet. Oh. I, I really think it's about time that we get that oh, as yeah. like, a minifigure because that I th like. Here's my thing, and I always have this gripe: is that we get these games from Lego and TT Games, right? They make all these games, all these figures in the games, and it's like, okay, can we get those as actual figures though? Like we love playing as them, but we want the actual figures. Give that to us, mm -hmm. and they just don't. So I, I would they have a collectible mm -hmm. Stanley many titles. Yeah. To like find yeah. Stan Lee. yeah. So it's like it's about I think it's about time. And maybe you know, like give him a I don't know. Maybe like an exclusive print, maybe like a print of the first comic he worked on and then I don't know as a second accessory, maybe like a, a briefcase or a pen or something like that. I think that would be cool. Okay, let's let's talk about this. What about um, Mike, we're going to get to you, but I want to, I want to rest on this for a little bit because I actually think that's a pretty good answer, Kirk. I could, I could see Stan Lee being a San Diego Comic-Con exclusive yeah. figure someday in the future. Now, and, and my gut reaction was the only reason I couldn't see it is that like he was a real person in real life, but Mm -hmm. There is not zero precedent for that, right? So can we? That's what I want to pick out a little bit. What minifigures have been created to represent real life factual people? And the only ones that come to the top of my head are the women of NASA. But that doesn't mean there aren't more. But but that in and of itself means that there is at least precedence. Uh, imagine there... imagine a collectible series of all Stanley cameos. That'd be cool. That would be cool. 
in the movies. Yeah, Wouldn't yeah. Very, uh... yeah. But he looks pretty much the same in all of them, doesn't he? Well, it depends. No, he, he, yeah. he shows up as a cameo in many places, like a oh, mailman yeah, yeah. or, yeah. yeah. Brett, Brett says, yeah, the NBA basketball team, the soccer football the team, NBA. those ones. Wasn't there um, a Will I Am minifigure or something like that at some point? Yes, that was custom, was. like a custom thing. It was soccer from Lego. minifigures. Okay. okay. Oh, oh, but it was from Lego. Yeah, I yeah. think so. Um, I think so. The Beatles, didn't they do George Lucas? Oh, the, was that a the thing? Beatles? Mm -hmm. George Lucas is very collectible. Yeah, George he has a Lucas. Minifigure, but he's super collectible. He's yeah. What's it from? How did? Where did? Uh, I think that with the George Lucas. Yeah. It was like some was Star from, Wars uh, super exclusive, Studi. like you. I, no, I think it was from Studio. I think was it? I, that sounds about right. Yeah. Yeah, I think it was Studio. So, yeah, the um, you know, the minifigures in the haunted. The new haunted house were pretty much all based on real people. The one that looks like right. Neek, you can tell is supposed to be Neek because it's essentially the sig fig that he's been using for years to represent himself. Um, but of course, it's not official, right? But um, yeah, that's interesting, Kirk. I could actually see that happening someday. Uh, San Diego Comic Con exclusive minifigure, I think, is where that would happen. I, I don't think it would actually happen in a in a uh, unless you know, I guess if they did a Marvel, they did the DC. If they did a Marvel CMF series, mm -hmm. maybe. Yeah, cool. Yeah. That's a good idea, though. I like it, Mike. You got one. If you had to, if you had to invent the next collectible minifigure, what would it be? You know what? I would say something I'm pretty passionate about and probably a bit of a fun at this point. But everything that Elon Musk is doing with SpaceX and uh, Tesla, I'm like, I'm a big fan of following whatever. Especially now, as we had like just like a second uh, manned mission, you know, two days ago or yesterday, two days ago, successfully docking of four astronauts on a SpaceX Dragon crew capsule. Um, I'm not sure why Lego is not doing SpaceX. I know we have like the, every every second Lego Ideas project is now SpaceX. I know that and a Tesla. But I think if ever it happened, like Elon Musk and people of NASA should have more recognition for what's happening in that. Uh, type of you know technology and endeavor in the world right now, especially with the, all the achievements being done. So I think yeah, I would love to have an Elon Musk minifigure that's official and some sort of like recognition of his companies, especially mm -hmm. Tesla and SpaceX for what they're doing. But I'm pretty passionate about it, so probably that's gonna be m mostly towards you know people like me. Mm -hmm. uh, but still, I think they they do deserve all that you know glamour for what they do so far. Right on. Um, I don't, I still, I would love a steampunk. I'd love a steampunk dude. And I know that they, they really leaned into that aesthetic quite a bit in uh, Lego movie two, mm -hmm. but I think that that was sort of a, um, you know, I don't know, I guess maybe, maybe I'd love to see like some IP, some original IP around kind of a steampunk world. And I'm amazed that there isn't, hasn't been more of it again. I realize they've found the opportunities within their existing IPs to visit those uh, kinds of themes, but I think a whole world of steampunk stuff would be really awesome. Okay, let's see. We have about 13, 12, we have about 12 minutes. Um, Jeff McElwee put in some big uh, link there. This is the closest thing to a movie director we've gotten. Not sure about Lucas. Good point. Let me see if. Well, we'll go. I'll go check that out. Mine. All right. Uh, mine. I, I came up with one. So I feel like they've covered the historical characters well. So I think uh, for me, I'd like to see them make a juggler and not like not like a clown, not a jester. I'm just saying like a do like and they would they would need to make um juggling club like custom molded pieces. I don't think we've ever gotten like actual custom molded like real looking like well printed like juggling clubs. So for people who don't know, John and I both juggle. Uh, we've done a lot of different shows and stuff over the years. Um, so that's something that we enjoy doing. And I think like like just a you know a more normal, not not a not a clown or a jester, just a more normal looking person with like some juggling clubs would be super cool. I I that leads me to uh, the the next question, John Joshua. It, what would we have to do to get you to just juggle a little bit for us here on the stream? Right now? <laughs> Is there? Yeah, yeah. Or in With a minute. Lego sets. You could, it, you could be, it could be now or it could be 60 seconds from now. I, I can fill time. I, just, what what <laughs> uh, would it take? Yeah, would I, you do it? It's something to juggle. Uh, There's um, a lot of sets behind you. So uh, uh, yeah, Taj Mahal nice. in one and, uh, <laughs> and, and Pirates of Barracuda uh, Bay. What else is there? 
uh, I see some uh, creator cars. <laughs> <laughs> Can you yeah. juggle sitting down? Okay. You don't have. You, we, we can do it. Taj comes in. Taj Mahal comes in. So you can take. You got some bean bags. Taj Mahal sitting down there, don't you? We've got a. We've got a brickheads. Oh, brickheads is good. Custom brickheads from Brickvention in Australia. We've got this Technic ball, uh, designed by John Matz. Uh, and there's a there's a birthday cake which was the event the from Brick Fet in Toronto many years ago. Take the candle up. All right, you, you start. You start. Okay. You guys are you guys are just going to be able to juggle those things. It, you don't have to have. See, I, I feel like if I were to just start juggling right now, which um which I I wouldn't do, but if if I were to just start juggling right now, I feel like I would want like three brick heads or three birthday cakes. But but you guys are real pros. Like you can have one <laughs> birthday cake and one brickhead and one other random uh, geometrical shape. As that's, long as they're as long as they're generally the same shape, we can usually do it. So I'm, I'm okay. gonna give it a I was just we're, gonna, we're gonna stick with uh, all all Lego stuff and see if I can do this. So yeah, we've got okay. all do, we've got oh, the wait. birthday cake and the, the brickheads. Before you start, would you typically have um would you typically have music? Um, it depends. Sometimes we, sometimes we perform to music. Um, it just depended on the show and what we were doing. So if you have some music you want to play, feel free. I, well, I always, I always have music. Um, but, uh, this, okay, here's, I, I'm going to, I'm going to put you guys on and it's going to go like this. Are you ready? Um, everybody together now it goes. You're supposed to do something exciting at the exciting part of the song. I didn't see. I didn't see John juggling. No, oh, I, we, I can do we it. We only have three things. I, I, but I can do you it. Can't, I, I'm sorry. I was under the impression. I was under the impression that there would be like some passing back and forth. You have to. Oh. So, so, like the definition oh. of juggling oh. is having more objects than hands involved. And so, we only have three ah. things, and we can't both both be doing it, or else it's not juggling. Uh, <laughs> that's. I. I'll be honest, you guys. I just learned something. I did not know that that was the definition of juggling more yeah. things than hands that's kind of the whole idea oh. yeah yeah that makes that makes yeah. a lot of sense yeah I spot did, I the magic ninja says tip for the hat all right well, we, John. we do juggle together though so yeah. we do, we've done flaming torches and then when we do that we do six of them so we have four oh, hands wow. and then it's six six of them so, so the impression i was under you? when you said the impression I was under when you said we've why done a number do, of shows together. Why you do not have a YouTube channel about juggling? <laughs> yeah. What, what's like, wrong? All right. I didn't even I'm going to put you that's, back that's on slow layout. Thank you me. very much. Spot the Magic Ninja for a uh, $5 tip. We don't have anything on, on, fi uh, on fire right now, unfortunately. Sorry. Oh, sorry. <laughs> You're indoors. That sounds very safe, is it? Yeah. All right, John, do we get to see you? <laughs> okay. Okay. I'll attempt it here. What? I think the brickheads is losing pieces. Oh, Perfect timing. Perfect timing. That was amazing. All right. Good job, you guys. I'm so glad. Um, I... Here's the deal. We we told a bunch of awkward stories about Joshua before you guys got here, um, and then we we have really given you nothing but a hard time since you got here. Um, so I, I should we should maybe we should have called this like a, a Hanlon roast. I like but... I like Perry's comment. <laughs> more, more things than hands is the name of the upcoming Hanlon memoirs book. <laughs> <laughs> this is why Perry's so amazing. He just has these ideas that are just gold. It's it's perfect. Yeah, Perry, uh, we love you. We're glad glad you're here. Um, sorry. Oh wait. Hey, Perry Wang. I I when I stopped doing that song, I almost said, "Can any of you uh, tell me what that song was from?" You were right, Perry. That I was doing a the I think Pee Wee's Big Adventure. I don't know what whichever the one is. When all the he's got that contraption and the, it's making him breakfast, I think it's uh, I think it's from that uh, Pee Wee's Big Adventure. If yeah, I'm, yeah. 
Awesome. Don't get, don't get too close. You're going to get a copyright violation, Boone. Yeah, well, it, it was a cover, so I'll yeah. split revenue okay. with uh, okay. whoever owns it uh, in most cases, unless it's the Eagles, in which case they just take everything, <laughs> which is which is fine. <laughs> it's fine. Um, okay. Jensen says the Flying Hanlon Brothers. And fun fact, there actually was a circus, like a Hanlon circus, not unrelated, no no blood sure. relation that I'm aware of, but they were the, <laughs> the old Hanlon Brothers, like 100 – plus years ago that had like a circus act that they would go around and do. Uh, there's wow. been some books published on it. Yeah. It's kind of crazy. You sure there's no relation. Cause that's, I'm, I'm, I'm actually more surprised that there's no relation. There probably is a relation. I don't, I don't know. Not that I'm aware we, of. We don't know it, but I, there's gotta be. Okay. Well, um, we, we're going to, we're going to, I'm just going to talk a little bit to my viewers here for a moment and then we'll go round Robin on one more thing. And uh, you can think about it. it it's just going to be parting words, you guys. Okay. So, so um, think for a moment. You're each going to get a, an option. Uh, not an option, but you're each, it's mandatory. But you're each going to get an opportunity to, uh, to leave everyone watching with uh, some words of wisdom from Brian, Kirk, Josh, John, and Mike. Um, but for a moment, I'll just say thank you so much to Brett Hooper. Lana River Blue is here. Samir is here. Larry, Classic Bricks, Alyssa, Cornado. Um, we've had Jeff McElwee has been here. Perry Wang has been a riot tonight. Brent Waller is here. Oh yeah, Brent Waller thought it was the Pee Wee movie score too. Yep. Um, Brickanista, Willie Ball, Dave Morgan, Jake Sadovich. Thank you all so much for watching tonight. It's been a real treat. Um, of course, like uh, always, this live stream has been brought to you by a uh, Hogwarts attending Gungan <laughs> and. <laughs> My current Lego Ideas Project, the Magic School Bus. Thank you for all your support. And uh, if you can share that with anyone who is willing to go over there and support that project, it would be greatly appreciated. So this is it, everybody. We are reaching – this is the last five minutes of Season 2 of AFL Spotlight Live. Words of wisdom. We're going to go – can we go from – is it – am I making anyone uncomfortable if we go from youngest to oldest with words of wisdom? Sounds good. Who's the youngest? Who's who? Who do we think? Who's the youngest in the room? <laughs> who, who, who might that be? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Um, all right. So I I would simply just say that don't. I'm trying to think. I'm trying to really think. Make it deep. Better, Make it deep. Put me on spot here. Very go deep. Go. Okay. If Let's you see. think you're deep, go deeper. Like one level deep. Let's see. All right. So no matter what it is that you may enjoy doing don't stop doing it because someone may make fun of you for doing it don't stop doing it because of the fact that maybe not everyone is doing it i used to struggle with that a lot and honestly it's not a good spot to be in if you have something that you like doing it you go ahead and do it because eventually people will see how actually it's it's what makes you you it's something that you enjoy doing, and you shouldn't be ashamed of it. And that's my advice for you guys. Awesome. Thank you very much, Kirk. You're welcome. I'm so I'm so glad you're here, buddy. Everybody, uh, be looking for a dedicated episode of April Spotlight Live with Kirk Wilson in uh, after the first of the year in 2021. Uh, it's going to be awesome, and we're going to have more tasty tidbits like that when it comes around. Um, who do we think is the next youngest? I'm uh, my birthday's on January 23rd, 1996. So I don't know about you, you two down there. Yeah, you've got me beat by like a month. Okay, so then that would be me for youngest. Okay, man, I'm old. So, oh my goodness. What? <laughs> I'm sorry, Mike. I'm sorry. Man. <laughs> uh, so if I had to leave you with any parting words for uh, the rest of this year going into 2021. Um, this year has been bad and 2021 will be better. Not only because of, uh, all of us being here, uh, sharing a genuine interest in this hobby, but being here for each other as a uh, community. But I would, uh, also like to thank, uh, for the opportunity to do, uh, the beyond the brick thing to Joshua and John for, uh, allowing me to spew my shenanigans weekly, uh, far beyond what I thought they would ever allow me to do. It's been absolutely incredible. And the overwhelming embrace from uh, a lot of people in the community has been fantastic. 
2021 will be it will be a better year than 2020. Just even from like the Lego community standpoint in general, it's going to it's we're going we're gonna to do big things. All right. So I hope everybody stays as well as you possibly can. Be safe, be kind, courteous and respectable and tune into that 24 hour live stream to see some delirium. <laughs> Woo! All so right. I mean, Ooh, you would I... never know Brian is it's so stickling. young. <laughs> is this, I, wow. I had no, I, I imagined what this question would uh, bring out and it, it has exceeded my expectations already. I, I'm guessing Joshua's next. Yes, that's that's right. Uh, unless unless Mike slides in just be, just in the month between me and me and Brian. <laughs> I don't think so. No, no, no. <laughs> We're talking um, years. <laughs> well, uh, building off of what Brian said, it's been a, it's been a pleasure, Brian, having you on the streams. I look forward to more fun streams, uh, the twenty four hour live stream, and then beyond into twenty twenty one. And as far as some wisdom uh, to share with people, something that that. Uh, I, a, a big lesson I've learned this year that I, has really been impressed into me, uh, of the months that we've been doing the live streams here and just the, the really dedicated fan base we've had is, you know, going, going into 2021, if you're a, a fan of someone or something, uh, make sure that person knows that because it means a lot to people when, when they get the support and know that they have people out there that whether it's a content creator on YouTube or, um, someone that you, you know, in, uh, in real life, that an artist, whatever it might be, any anything that that you're a fan of or a person that you're a fan of, um, you know, they it, it, it's very very encouraging to people to to get that feedback and know that people enjoy uh, what they do. So if you if you're a fan of something, uh, let that let the people know and and let them know how much you enjoy it because it means a lot. So so that's what I'd encourage folks to do uh, going into next year. Awesome. Who do we get next, John or Mike? I'm guessing it's me. I'm I'm 26. Oh boy. Uh, I will say okay. I'm I'm 35. <laughs> so I think that's me. <laughs> that. Uh, yes. so I'll stick with the theme of looking back on the year, and I'll just say to make the best of the situation. So uh, you know, obviously. We are used to going to a lot of Lego events, I think, uh, you know, and, and doing a lot of different things that we have not been able to do this past year. But as a result, we've been able to do other things that would not have been been possible, such as the quarantine cast and uh, other things that have come along. So just make the best of every situation. It may not be an ideal situation. 2020 is not the year that maybe anybody wanted it to be or, or would have preferred, but just to make the best of every situation uh, and especially going into to next year as well. As as the the old uh, like 1990s Lego model used to be, you control the action. That's right. <laughs> All right, Mike, uh, you are just a bit younger than me, so you get to go next. All right. You were born. Uh, were you born in '85? Yes, August. Okay. August. Yeah, in '85. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I would say I I like the the quote. I keep following. Um, Comparison is the death of joy. And I would like to dedicate that to all the people who, what, what Joshua said, like, if you show appreciation to a creator, they do appreciate it. But also I see a lot of questions like, how do I become part of Beyond the Brick? How do I become a YouTube creator? How do I do what you guys do? Well, look at us, at me, at, at every single one of us. I was now not a, no, I was nobody four years ago on YouTube. I, I joined Brick Vault all of a sudden, and I just learned on the go how to become a person on the camera and everything. And that today I'm part of Beyond the Brick and I had some such fantastic opportunities to do so many cool things with you guys. And if I look back, even this year was, you know, terrible for all of us just being on lockdowns and, and trying to, um, you know, to live up to people who may, may have it better or worse than us. If you compare yourself and not do the work, then you're gonna just kill your joy. So don't ask how you can become like a creator on YouTube, a Lego creator and any creator. Try to think what makes you happy and what you can do to get there. So take your opportunities, right? Like 
don't say no too often. Say yes when the opportunity comes to you. And that's what I did. That's what I did with Brickwall. That's what I did with Beyond the Brick when they posted that video asking for reviewers to join the team. I just said, yeah, let's try it. Let's see how it goes. And they gave me the chance. And I never compared myself to maybe better creators. I never tried to be somebody that I'm not. I'm not. So don't let comparison kill your joy and take the opportunity when you can. Uh, go forward, make make the best you think you can make. If you think videos, make the best videos. If you think building mocks, make start somewhere and go from there, right? So I think we can all go by this rule that don't, don't try to be better than you think you are, but work towards that goal to be better and to create whatever you want to create. Don't think too much about it. And also pineapple doesn't go on pizza. Okay, I'm done. Well, wow, that's the best. <laughs> well, what? I made them talk on the last one. They, you know, I had this whole like monologue. <laughs> well, uh, Brian, Kirk, Mike, John, Joshua, thank you all so much for being here tonight. It really means the world to me. I, I owe so much of uh, the incredible things that I've been able to experience in the Lego fan community to uh, be on the brick and to Joshua and John for the. The opportunities you guys uh, have invited me into and it's just you know it's gone from there so it's it's been a real pleasure I thank you all for taking your time tonight um, to uh, to be here uh, again Mike and Kirk will each be back for their own dedicated AFL spotlights when AFL spotlight live returns in 2021 this is the end of season two you get the rest of uh, November and December off but I will be back uh, with some other exciting content here on Boone Builds um, for the next couple of months. My piece of advice, my words of wisdom are, are short, and it is this. Whether when you go into the world or when you go onto the interwebs or whenever you go out uh, and engage the things that you're going to engage, whether you are searching for uh, the beauty or whether you are searching for the ugliness you are guaranteed to find it. Um, so uh, I, uh, I urge you to search for the beauty. All right. Thank you all. It's been so such a wonderful time. Please subscribe to Boone Builds. You can find each one of these people's independent YouTube channels, including Beyond the Brick, Bricks O'Brien, Vision Bricks, and The Cool Factor. They're all in the video description of this video. You've all been amazing. Thank you so much for watching. And until next time, go build something amazing. Let's go! Time to form this proverbial Winnebago. We're talking about the awesome fans of Lego. So build your mock and shift it into drive.